If you thought you missed out on the best rates ever, you have another chance. Even if you refinance last month or last year, you can do it again. Loan Pronto's all digital process is fast. It's easy. Most loans get closed in 14 days and most don't even require an appraisal. Call Loan Pronto now. Start the process before rates spike again. Do it now. You can even skip your next two house payments. 615-499-5780. LoanPronto.com. 615-499-5780. Equal housing lender. NMLS 1661781. Subject to lender approval. Not all loans eligible for zero cost. With this red hot real estate market right now, one of the most important decisions you're ever going to make is who to trust when it's time to sell your home. Hey, this is Don Davenport from 3HL, and if you're ready to take advantage of this market, Mark Spain Real Estate is the most trusted real estate team in the U.S. This is crazy. They've earned over five thousand five-star reviews and their guaranteed offer makes selling your home easy and stress-free no showings no open houses no stress at all you don't have to worry about the hassle of constant cleaning and you don't have to make costly repairs sell your home hassle-free with the strongest cash offer in the industry the wall street journal ranks mark spain real estate the number one real estate team in the u.s for closed transactions for the fourth year in a row they know what matters most that's a quick sale maximum profit no showings no open houses no stress. It's that simple. Find out what Mark Spain's guaranteed offer would be on your home. No obligation. Go to MarkSpain.com today. 855-299-SOLD. MarkSpain.com and start packing. Discover matches all the cash back you earn on your credit card at the end of your first year. It's amazing because Discover is accepted at 99% of places in the U.S. that take credit cards. Learn more at Discover.com slash yes. 2021 Nielsen Report limitations apply. From the WinBet studio, win with WinBet. WGFX Gallatin, Nashville. Get the very latest out of Titans training camp here on your home for Titans football. Trending now at 104.5 The Zone. Good afternoon. I am Joe Hunk, and Tennessee Titans training camp has started. In fact, many topics were the key today for Mike Vrabel as he had his opening press conference, but one of which involves two players that everybody's been keeping their eye on this offseason. Well, they're on PUP, so they work out, um, they go to meetings, they rehab, um, and and they, they just can't be involved in practice or the walkthrough. And those guys are working hard to to get better. And the same thing I tell our team, that everybody here has a plan for most everybody, that plan's the same, but then for others, it's a little different. Um, but at the end of the day, everybody's working hard to, to improve or get better and, and, and help the team. When he says they, he means Bud Dupree and Caleb Farley. That, those were the two VEs that he was talking about just then. Also in the news is it is officially, official, official. The Oklahoma Sooners and Texas Longhorns have applied to the SEC, and the SEC will be meeting on Thursday. For all your foundation repair and waterproofing needs, visit USSTN.com. Breaking news at once on your home for the Titans, the Vols, and yes, 3HL. This is 104.5 The Zone. The 3HL with Brent Doherty, Don Davenport, and... Don Davenport texted us about 10 minutes ago. Coming in hot. And I had just literally said to Slay, I'm feeling a coming in hot text coming. No, uh. I did. You did I not? It. Did I not? Now, when when I say coming in hot, what do you guys think? Coming Fired in pissed? up. No, no. no, uh, no I mean, no, no, she's. No, no. Me. We know where hunk yeah. <laughs> where a hunk falls on this. No, one. she's right. gonna be like close to showtime. <laughs> yeah, I, I just said coming that in, in the hot. car to my uh, partner that I was talking to. I said she should be coming in about two fifty five. And guess what? Two fifty five, baby. Boom. You know, you know what else I said? Full disclosure. <laughs> She needs to text us when she's coming in early and not when she's coming in hot. Yeah. Because we'll just assume the hot part. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Plus, I'd like no, to take that as the other hot. There's no traffic right now. Yeah. Everybody's in freaking oh, Florida no. or Caribbean. Right. or There might not be any traffic, but there are some idiots out there. <laughs> you almost get sideswiped again. And You're Rhett standing- B, we don't want your opinion either. <laughs> Rep B. Yeah, you, just caught the you, want, you want me to sit down? This camera's facing that way. I, I like mean, when you're up. If you're going to come in and screw it. stuff up, put it back, people. Yeah. 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 Wait. Y'all, she, can, <laughs> y'all can tell what's going camp, on baby. today, man. Yeah. Did, did she do that yesterday when she uh, did the dance with the Diet Dr. Pepper? 
She might have. I did not do that. Somebody sat in my chair. It was. Somebody did. It was on All show. of our zone, 1045thezone.com uh, viewers, please let me know who is at fault for this. So it was I can the comedian. destroy them immediately. The comedian did it. Oh, dang, I can't destroy him. He'll destroy me. Yeah. <laughs> Crap. <laughs> it was the big bat wolf that was sitting over there. I'm not as funny as him. <laughs> it's probably true. Yeah. Hey, boys, guess what? what? Talk to us. Training camp is here, baby. Well, let's go. Let's go. Well, let's start as we should. Don Davenport is here. Hey, Don. Hey, hey. Hey! Guess who else is here? You ready? Who? You ready, Hunk? I'm in the building. I'm in the building. Hey, I'm in the building. 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 There's Red Brian yeah. taking the producer from Titan Radio on his own TV feed, yeah. Yeah. doing weird things Very behind Ron's leg. Catch us on Periscope, which is really Twitter Live. <laughs> That's the link we throw out there. Facebook Live, YouTube, and Twitch. Uh, <laughs> All right, we're in a mu- we're already in a much better yeah. place here on this Tuesday. Seriously, get the Twitch app. That's that's my Twitch, favorite please. one. You like the there Twitch you go. Uh, because yeah, it tells you when when stuff's happening. Oh yeah, it does. Yeah, like right before six a.m. Man, boom! Here comes J. Martin Ramon. You know what? I always get the Facebook. Come on, Slay. No, don't start this early. Facebook <laughs> alert. How did I try to put an L before the O? A Facebook. I don't know. It happens sometimes. Yeah, but, that's, that's, but usually that it happens happen. on a Monday, not a Tuesday. Yeah, like I'm hey, going. Totally random, but uh, thanks to Brooks Taylor for pointing this out. Pistons GM Troy Weaver still in my lingo. What? Call it bunk? Yeah. Oh, really? No. Oh, yeah. Pistons GM Troy Weaver on trade rumors. It's all bunk. Wow. Troy, I feel you, baby. Look at that. Wow. And I really he's, thought, like, cool. He's not. I really I mean, thought Don really cool was the him. only person under the age of 85 that said that word. <laughs> Think. <laughs> Look at that range. I am not. <laughs> Troy Weaver is with me. I'm coming at you today, Davenport. <laughs> Yesterday was Slay. <laughs> yes, it was, man. I'm going to get you going. What was wrong <laughs> with traffic today? Because we leave here at Nothing. 6 o'clock, man. It's like the Autobahn out there. Yeah, None of y'all are on the road. No, wow. I, I stopped somewhere. <clears throat> I'm not going to say where to hmm. possibly get something to drink and ordered in a drive through to make it home. I know. I have my water. I know. I don't need your help. <laughs> they you sell don't need alcohol to point at the drive through now? Uh, anyway. <laughs> yeah, they There's a liquor to. store in Bowling Green <laughs> that has a drive through It's so, a big red barn. Really? Yeah, Western Kentucky. Panama University. City Beach, Florida has it as well. Oh, yeah. I, uh, so anyway, yeah, I was um, I, I was trying to do that before I came into work, and I was in the drive-thru for 12 minutes before I promptly just drove off because there were still five cars in front of me. Oh, my. <laughs> so maybe that might m- might play into my um, <laughs> frustration you, just who, a bit. Who were you most frustrated with in that scenario? By the way, Hunk is wearing sunglasses for some I'll reason. Just I look. I want to say these are Lucas's, but I'm not sure, so I just threw them on. And I was looking at the zone they're TV. They're a little girly. I was yeah, like, wow. they, but they're in the studio, so they're either Lucas's or whoever's filling in for Shay. By the way, way uh, Honk has a hat on today because the, he had the he had the flop <laughs> hawk going. <laughs> he got flop hawk. Slay was like, man, that thing was leaning to one side. <laughs> it was all over. I've, he could do uh, it like oh, this. Oh, you want me to take it? Okay. So he it, could part it. Yeah, what? Well, so... Yeah, I don't need. And I need the haircut. There. Um, why don't you part it, it looks down like the you middle? got a Brillo pad on your head. <laughs> it's a Brillo pad. Um. Okay. Anyway, I'm sorry I interrupted no, who, you. Who were you most frustrated with in that scenario? The four people in front of you or the business? The business. Okay. Yeah. Because you I'm didn't like, have anything why to is say. It, it's so not the, hard. Why? What's why? Why is it taking this? Did long? you tell them they were number one when you drove by? I did not. I was. <laughs> I was very you classy. Guys are number one. I, I I think Don Davenport just flipped us off. <laughs> well, That's because here's say. the we'll other call. thing. You guys know my parents own a my family owns a bar and a restaurant, and they are having a hard time finding people to work for mm-hmm. them. So people that are actually working, then you you know you, you, you got to cut them a break. They're clearly understaffed. I got you. Mm-hmm. All right, it felt it felt like a struggle for you to say that. It was, it was right really there. hard. That it was really hard. Struggle bus, but you know. I do. I just have. I have a patience problem. I understand that. I. I am working on it every day, trying to become a better person. I'm trying to become more patient with everything in my life. Are you there really you go. Trying? This or- is my conversation I have with my therapist every week, and here we are. Listen, we all have so things. We're not. We're not perfect. There was one perfect person. Yeah. There was one perfect person. 
So we all have things we're working through, man. We're on this journey called life. Yes, we all are. Do we want to get really, like, down into the introspective world here? No. Yes. It's Just- Titans training camp day. Thank yes. you. Oh, yes. Thank you. Yes. That's Woo. where we want to go to. Uh, although Come they on. really didn't do a whole lot today. They reported, and then they did their conditioning test. Yeah, okay. that's a lot. That's <laughs> more than the camp itself. Let me test. ask you this, though. Are these conditioning tests conducted outside, or are they in the bubble? The, the tests that I've seen done in the past are outside. Outside. Do yeah, you know Brent how Ryan stinking hot it is out there? Ooh. The heat index is like 110. Right now so, it's 102, and it's 3 o'clock, and they've been off the field for two hours. Like, I understand that these are professional athletes, and they are next level, but, mm. man, I always clearly, think about, I hope you've been working out and are in great shape <laughs> coming in because that is a hell of a conditioning but, test to do in that heat. Back yeah. in the old days when they had, like, six preseason games, like, guys would report to camp to get in shape. That's what now, Slay used to do. Now you better. Oh, I snorted. <laughs> <laughs> There's yeah, a lot going shape. on over there. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> in shape. Wouldn't have to hey. breathe like that if I was in shape, huh, Babs? Don has That's like true. Don could be in medical sales because yeah. of all the equipment she has in her backpack, like yes. oxygen tester that I'm, you put on your finger. By the way, I'm good? phenomenal. You're phenomenal. He's his oxygen levels are 96. I was bad yesterday, right? Like yeah, I, you, you were, were worried 90. about. You're 95. You need some water. 95. There. That's only one off him. Yeah, but that's a lot off me. <laughs> what? Yeah. Well, Going just to Dr. Babs. I'm 99. All right. I'm oh, gonna wow, try to beat Babs. You. Wait. So what does that mean? I'm going to take under, deep breaths. Huh? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> you're not in trouble unless take you're right. short breaths. Here's here's what the conditioning test is. I yes. have all the details yesterday. Yesterday I had part of the information, which is usually what I bring. I mean, let's be real. Now you have it all? I have it all. Okay. Yeah, no. All right, so the conditioning test is broken down into 40-yard runs, okay. 50-yard runs, or 60-yard runs, depending on the position. So skill guys are running 60 yards in eight seconds with 30 seconds in between each rep, and you have to do 20 of them. Oh. Okay? No. Yeah. And that sounds like a lot, 30 seconds, until you've done, like, 10 of them, I would imagine. Yeah. What are you doing over there? I, I'm, I'm a disaster. Hunks. Somebody <laughs> sat in my chair and moved all my stuff, and now it's messing You like how she head. immediately just bite and hunk? <laughs> like, hunk yeah, doesn't even fit in here. No, I was saying Hunk is going to come fix it oh, for oh, me. Oh. I said, you can wait till the break. I'm here. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. All right, so um, skill guys, 60 so, yeah, yards. 30 seconds sounds like a lot of time. But you got to do it in eight. So, and then, you know, like. Special teamers and I don't know maybe linebackers and mm-hmm. and and those guys fifty yards and so same thing eight seconds and for fifty and then thirty seconds in between and then the big guys go forty yards in eight seconds with a thirty second rest in between. Do you think that that is a hard like line conditioning test for an NFL football team? Um, no, no. you don't. No. No, Can not, I ask this go, though? Go back. Why do you why why? Why do we even do it? These are professional athletes. Like, hey, if you're not in shape, you ain't gonna make the team. I can tell by looking at you. Nah. Like, why do we eyeball even test? do this? Don't do that. You can't test. do the eyeball No, because that's not fair. Because listen, I've never been the type <laughs> to come that in. Personal. You do yes, see I that, am. right? Yeah. Because <laughs> I've never I, I hated this. I hated this. Because I am a I guy that's that, ready. <laughs> it's upside down. I thought you were gonna come at me. Now, this is this is what I'm saying. Like you got to understand, some people's body genetically doesn't shape the way it should shape to look like a professional athlete. I can feel you. My body like doesn't do that. Like, you've always had super yeah, I've always, tiny always, legs. Yeah, I've always had tiny legs. <laughs> I've always had a nice belly. But. <laughs> you need yeah, that for the boom boom room. But yeah, yeah you, say, you feel what I'm saying? <laughs> yes. But when you get out there, you give me three officials and nine other guys to play with, it's a totally different outcome. But that's kind of part of my argument of why do you even do a conditioning test? Okay, well, cool. Right? I just don't like where the mayor was about to go. <laughs> <laughs> where was I going? You were going there, wherever it was. Probably in that traffic that Babs was in, so. <laughs> we're out of that traffic. We're on the Autobahn now. Hey, 6 o'clock in the, in the evening? There ain't no traffic on 6 o'clock. Yeah, we gone. So. Yeah, but that's, that's not... Everybody body don't look like that. That's what I'm saying. Usually I go flying past Dawn, too. Like, she'll leave first, and I'll go flying past her. <laughs> One day... <laughs> I left first. 
And I was going down the interstate, and here she comes, man. <laughs> war da- like the car was like war, war damn, damn eagle. <laughs> eagle. <laughs> Hey. Going by me. I don't know what she was doing that day, but that was one day. One day. All right, hey, when we come back, Mike Vrabel held a live press conference at St. Thomas Sports Park today for the first time since the week leading up to the AFC Championship game following the 2019 season. What did he say? We'll talk about it. We'll play some of it for you, and we'll take your phone calls. How excited are you guys that the Titans have reported they get on the field tomorrow? 615-737-1045. Coming up tomorrow on Blaine and Mickey. We'll get a Titans training camp report from John Glennon of Broadway Sports after day one on the practice field. And we continue our trip around the SEC, talking Lane Kiffin and Ole Miss with Nick Suss of the Clarion Ledger. Tomorrow, starting at 1 p.m. on 104.5 The Zone. All right, Firestone Tires, the only tires driven by IndyCar drivers. They're finally hitting the road and racing Friday, August 6th through August 8th. They're doing it on the streets of Nashville, the streets that they call home. This is going to be awesome. You can watch all weekend as Firestone Rubber meets the legendary streets of Music City and enjoy the sweet music of IndyCars racing along every stretch Korean Veterans Bridge, yep, they'll be racing right over, crossing the water there on the Korean Veterans Bridge. Feels good to be home for Firestone, the exclusive tire of the big machine Music City Grand Prix. Again, Friday, August 6th through August 8th, IndyCar Racing coming to Music City, and Firestone is the exclusive tire of the big machine Music City Grand Prix, the official tire of the NTT IndyCar Series, and Firestone Firestone certainly proud to be racing on their home streets of Nashville. Hey, Nashville, with Xfinity XFi, you get the ultimate control of your in-home Wi-Fi.
It was all one of those 99 cent lemonades that you can get at the corner store. I used to love those big cartons. Ooh, in the summer. Mike's Dollar lemonade? 17 cent. No. I was a, oh, you I mean was like kid. lemonade yeah. lemonade? Dude, kid, you sponsor right? Red Dog. This is where you you say something. That they can get it there. Oh, no, they already know. Go in there and say, I'm in the building, and the Red Dog got you. They know what it is. I that's love it. how Ron Slay, like, enters places, and people just start saying, I'm in the building, too. Yeah, that's that's what it is. I also yeah. hate how many times people said, uh, in the building at SEC Media Days, because all I could ever think of was Slay the entire time. Me, too. Actually, oh. this morning, Mike Vrabel, when he was speaking to the media, said something about it being in the building, because, uh, you know, there was a lot of vaccination and it, talk and all of that, and he said something in the building. I'm like, Slay. You can never forget. It. It's tied to it. Yep. Forever. That's what now. Forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> um, amen. Yes. So, uh, yeah, uh, we're going to talk about the Titans. Obviously, they reported today, took their conditioning test. Uh, Mike Vrabel said he was very pleased with how that went. And they'll have a That's team meeting great. tonight. And then they will hit the field tomorrow. Uh, we've got tons of Titans topics for you. Uh, but first, uh, t- uh, Texas and Oklahoma, the latest there. Jason Whiteley last night reported that Texas and Oklahoma – would formally file a letter today with the SEC requesting admission to the conference. They did that. And then Greg Sankey, who we had on the show less than a week ago, and deflected and deflected. And he said, consult the manual. I'm not the Southeastern Conference that. manual. Like, I'm going to do that. He flat out said, well, you know, Brent, it's online. You can uh, consult, you get it there. consult the manual. I even knew the answer when I asked yeah. the question. Yep. But, I, you know, and then Don he had to question Babs. three. And he's like, you're really good at your job, but I'm not going to answer. Yep. So, I mean, seriously, that was less than a week ago. And here's a statement from SEC Commissioner Greg Sankey. The University of Oklahoma and the University of Texas, two esteemed academic institutions with storied athletics programs, today submitted formal requests for invitations to become members of the Southeastern Conference in 2025. <laughs> While, number one, they'll be there next year. But anyway, while the SEC is not pro, they can't do that now. Like, they had to file like this and then they'll work on you know getting it expedited which will happen while the sec has not proactively sought new members you put that in there to avoid lawsuits we will pursue significant change when there is clear consensus among our members they meet tomorrow or thursday they meet thursday uh that such actions will further enrich the experience of our student athletes and lead to a greater academic and athletic achievement across our campuses the presidents and chancellors of the SEC and their capacity as the conference's chief executive officers will consider these requests in the near future, Thursday, per the bylaws of the SEC. Of, and this was my question. He just answered it right here. Less than a week later. Per the bylaws of the SEC, a vote of at least three-fourths of the SEC's 14 members is required to extend an invitation for membership. That vote will be Thursday. It will be 14 to nothing. The Texas and Oklahoma regents board of regents will meet friday and this will all be done just like that that fast and the big 12 better be on their game because if not they're gonna be gone well was it ice cube that told us you either smoke or you get smoked in boys in the hood yep i think that's right you are correct no boy you are correct and I think that's where the Big 12 is. You better smoke or, or you're going to get smoked. Brent, you are correct. Urban movies for 100. <laughs> <laughs> would Ramon have gotten that line if Jay Mart had asked him? I would have been. Yeah, I'm going to get to my guy. I'm going to get to my guy now. Yes, he would have got that one. I have a feeling that when they play that game in the morning that Ramon does know the answer sometimes, but yeah, some still of out of comedic necessity goes a different way. I just give him credit. There. He's just switching sometimes and ask cartoons. Like, he, Ramon's a kid, really. <laughs> at heart. A kid at heart. So he, uh, knows. he passed with flying colors <laughs> on that one. Yeah. Hit us on Twitter at 3HL 1045 anytime at He Hate V on Twitter. Talking about the impurity dairies. Jungle juice is Nashville staple growing up. We've talked about that. Yes, we have. You go play basketball, you get Ooh. hot and tired, and, and then you go to the store and you get the jungle juice. For like forty nine cents oh, in the carton. Oh man, the little car. Some about those cartons, the cardboard of a, the way the juice flows through the cardboard is special to me. Jeremy on Twitter. Uh, sometimes they didn't open right though. That was frustrating. Yeah. You didn't have to open the whole damn yeah. thing. I, you know what I used. To, I was, you know what I used to hate. What? When people would. <laughs> <laughs> We'll get back. We got time. What? When people would bite. People can relate to this. Bite it, and they would just hold it in their mouth like, and just suck it slowly 
out of it, but it'll be a little bitty crease where it could come out. Okay, I'm with Don on this one. Uh, Jeremy. <laughs> Did everybody know I was going there? <laughs> when are we going to get the Don Davenport TikTok beer poster challenge? I don't even know what that is. Oh, okay. I'm Spoiler alert. That ain't happening. <laughs> That's not a spoiler alert. That's an answer. Here's your answer. Never. <laughs> Check the manual. <laughs> Check the Check manual. Because <laughs> Check the 3HL manual. That ain't happening. Is that the something beer- that me or Slay could do? Oh, oh my gosh! No, please don't. No, I, I could. No, I could. You could, I guess, but you're. It won't be the female version of the beer poster challenge. It'll so. be more of a. Let me show y'all. Oh, what what are you gonna be like in a speedo or something? No, for those that don't know, this don't is know. a TikTok thing. <laughs> that that looks what good. It's like, that's it. This Nailed is where it. his camera should freeze. Nailed it. Please. If he were laying on the couch, please let it freeze. It would it's be the imagine, George. Just imagine the arms up there. It would be the George Costanza pose in his underwear. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, so this Woo! is a thing going on done. TikTok. It's like uh, women in scantily clad oh. clothes, bikinis, okay. you know, with a, yeah. a beer can or so, alcoholic beverage or whatever, you know, like typical beer poster. The funny thing is Jeremy followed us and then tweeted that. Like he followed us to tweet that. <laughs> that's, that's what he wanted to talk about today. Jeremy, ain't happening. <laughs> Mayor ain't happening, Jolton. my friend. But thanks for the follow. What's Ron Slade 35 think about the Grizzlies trade? We went through that yesterday. Sure did. Didn't understand the Valanciunas part of this deal because that is one of the more underrated guys in the NBA. Very productive Really use him. Went on a double-double tear last year. Does this mean that they want to get faster and they want to run more of that Golden State offense? They they don't have the shooters for that, but no. It makes me wonder, though, if they, if they want to go toward that system. I think it's just hard to see those, those guys go away from that grit and grind style. You know, everything everything about Memphis, listen, that team embodies the city of Memphis. You know, grind and it's got to be ugly sometimes. Like, just win. And I love it. I do, too. I think everybody there does. So, to, to bring that style, a Golden State style, I think they wouldn't. Um, I don't think they would be too happy about that. They love the Zebo guys and stuff like that, Tony Allen. All right. I think we've handled all of the social media stuff. I'll get to Zone TV message board in just a minute, but we got to get some Titan stuff going. Before we do that, let's get John and Franklin in here. He wants to talk about SEC and Texas and Oklahoma and all that stuff. John, what's up? Hey, guys. I was just thinking I heard someone the other day say, and I guess they were putting Alabama and Auburn in the east if they split it geographically. But I was thinking, you know, and I'm old enough that I've been watching, you know, sports and loving sports for a long time. But if you had LSU and Texas and Oklahoma on one side, and Florida and Alabama and, and uh, Georgia on the other, and let's face it, in basketball it's Kentucky, and in, and in football it's Alabama, and then it's everybody else. So you would you would have all the Western teams, uh, Mississippi, Mississippi State, Kentucky, Vanderbilt, West with those teams, and you'd play you play every team in your on your side. So it'd be seven games. You could have at least one. You're going to keep your natural rivals with Mississippi and Mississippi. I mean, uh, with Mississippi, Mississippi State, uh, Alabama, and Auburn. You give you give the other teams you give them at least one, if not two, other games to play rivals in the SEC every year. And that'll still leave you two or three uh, non non SEC games to play. Yeah. Here, so, yeah. Here's the thing, though, John. I, just think that w- I, I appreciate yeah. you, man. Um, I I said it on Twitter earlier. I would go away from the divisions yeah. and I would just throw them in a blender, man. And just that way, that gives you scheduling freedom. Um, to, to, you know, kind of mix and match, uh, you know, more often because like the current cycle, like, you know, if you're a Tennessee fan, you don't see LSU for seven years or whatever it is. Right now. That's an okay thing for a Tennessee fan. <laughs> there you go. It is right. <laughs> Again. Well, okay. Now, I'm just messing with you. I'm just Cause I'm such you. a Tennessee no, I mean, hater. No, but no, Hey, right. along those lines, he just said, <laughs> Uh, he just said ju- it's Alabama in football, Kentucky in basketball. Uh, it's not really the case anymore. That's not in the, the SEC case. for Listen, basketball. It's a but... team that owns the team the last three years. Yeah. I don't know what, what are you talking about. What did basketball do? They went to they went away from the divisions and threw everybody in a blender. I would do that with football too. I, I wouldn't mess with pods. I wouldn't mess with. And I know a lot There's of people. There's a lot are, of people that want the four pods. A lot of people want that, and I get it. And if they go that way, I'll be good with it. I mean, you're talking about. I mean, we love sports for the entertainment value, right? Like, I mean, adding Oklahoma and Texas, I mean, just 
They trump every other conference. I mean, this is crazy. You know the other uh, conference commissioners, when this news popped, were like, oh, my God. Because they probably didn't know. I mean, this was not out. So the limited, I mean, the people that knew were limited. Had to have been because you. the more people know, the easier it is to just have something slide. So there is minimal people that knew at this point. And I think the pods thing is just to give you two or three teams that you're playing every single year. Because if you do pods, you've got to do all in one encompassing and the top two teams play each other in an SEC championship. Okay, but it, I mean, I guess you could do the, what's the point of the pods though? Why don't you just keep your rivals in one other game? You know, well, like keep the, like Auburn, Georgia or whatever. That's the longest running rivalry. Deep South's oldest rivalry. Yeah. Yes. So like you can't get rid of that game like that one has to stay Auburn Alabama has to stay you know pick those couple of games that have to stay and then do what Brent said and make it a blender so you're with me on the blender absolutely I I, I think it's great I think it's fun divisions have ran their course and they serve no purpose now and I hate I despise the oh we've got a home and home with you know Virginia Tech (laughs) in 2081 like I hate that I hate the so far out scheduling Get rid of all that. We're getting look at Texas. Look how many games they've already got scheduled with the SEC for the course of the next six years. Yeah, funny. those are now funny gone. how that works. Yeah, though, right? yeah. And there's now there's no need. Oh, no, for they're not. Go- they're not gone. They're probably happening. But but you know, they're, but they're not out of conference. fan bases of all these schools have games that they're like, why do we play this every year? Like, I mean, why do you play South Carolina every year? Or South Carolina may be like South Carolina fan. Why do we play Missouri every year? Yep. Like, you know what? And that frees you from that. Right. Now here's the next move. I think. Uh, and we'll get to the time. Here's the next move, I think, in the college football world. The Big Ten right now has to be uh, in, in like, godfather-type meetings right now because that's the conference that could cherry-pick some teams, I think. The whole Big Ten? Big yep. Ten. Yeah, yeah. Because the Big 12, Stuart mm-hmm. Mandel put this out. My TV data-driven story today on the future of the Big 12's eight other schools. Charts like this are why it's going to be tough for any of them to land an invite into the ACC, Big 12, or Pac-12. Average TV audience, 2018-2019. Oklahoma, 22 games, 3.76 million uh, viewers. That's what they average. Texas, 3.2 million viewers. That's what they average. The rest of the schools average 886,000. It's going to be tough. There you Oklahoma go. Oklahoma and Texas drove that league, man. Very By the tough. way, a lot, of, um, a lot of talk, you know, oh, there's no trust now in college football. Where's the gentleman's agreement and the handshakes and all of this and a lot of that arising from Oklahoma leaving and, and not caring what happens to Oklahoma State, right? When there's the uh, legislative, legislation in place and there's the, you know, oh, we always take care of each other, whatever. So Bob Stoops uh, wrote... Like just a he wrote a piece for the athletic, right? <laughs> yeah, I haven't was, read it yet. <laughs> it was uh, no, it was um, for Tulsa World, I guess. Tulsa I don't know. World. I, I, I think Good it's Lord. a newspaper. I'm not sure where it was, <laughs> but regardless, I don't even know where Tulsa is. I can know I where just it is read you? Can I read you though? Me. His his comments in it. Just I, all you have to hear is three sentences, and and it tells you where everything is. Let's set the record straight. OU's move to the SEC is what's best for Oklahoma. The reality is that conferences are now more important than ever, and with limited spots, the strongest conferences would not accept OU if we were to require OSU to join as well. By joining the SEC, we ensure the state's flagship university will be represented nationally while protecting our rich football history For many years to come to move forward in any other manner would be to the detriment of OU and the state of Oklahoma. Holy cow. That's it. Hey, Oklahoma state, come here. Let me just lift my leg real Hmm. quick while you're laying on the ground. And here you go. It's a bucket. (laughs) We got a bucket. I mean, a piss bucket. How great. Yes. That's, that's hardcore. (laughs) Not that Bob Stoops cares nowadays. Oklahoma state. Very much so. (laughs) But seriously, Hey, guess what? Nobody would take Oklahoma if they required you to take Oklahoma State, too. So, screw them. That's basically what Bob said. I love it. I mean, he's not wrong. <laughs> because of Mike on YouTube, Godfather-type meeting, like when Michael locked the door and killed them all. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, Teresa Walker asked the first question today. That's what uh, she always does. Now, here's the thing. Teresa Walker is in Tokyo covering the Olympics for the Associated Press. She is a Hall of Famer. 
So we need to throw that out there. Very true. When you got an HOF next to your name, you need to you need to throw that out there. So she is. But uh, so anyway, she did ask the first question today from Tokyo while covering the Olympics about the team's vaccination status. Vrabel didn't offer a percentage of players vaccinated, but he said he was happy with the progress. Like like we talked about, there were going to be a bunch of players like right up against training camp that were going to get vaccinated, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. even if they didn't want to, because that's what the league did. Um, he said that all of the coaching staff, however, is fully vaccinated. So that's uh, that's where we are on the vaccination deal with the Titans. So we'll see uh, moving forward. Backup quarterback. This is one I'm fascinated with because I want Deshaun Kaiser to win. I don't even know why. Why? Why are you I, hating I don't know why. Woodside? I'm Woodside's tired of Logan just Woodside. been there forever. He hasn't done anything. He never exactly. does anything. Exactly. Why do you hate him? Exactly. It's time to move on. Exactly why. <laughs> I love Logan Woodside from what I hear about the guy. Like, I, I've heard that I would love him and he's a great dude and all of these things. But – I'm ready to move on with Deshaun Kaiser. I have no idea what Mike Vrabel said about it, but here's what he said about it. Yeah, I would imagine they, you know, I don't really go in there with a plan, but I would imagine they're going to play a lot, and they're going to play a lot with different people. I think that's the thing when you're evaluating quarterbacks is that, you know, they both have an opportunity to play in front of some or play with some players that that you anticipate being on your roster. Um, you know, and then sometimes you, you evaluate them with guys that, that may not be. And... You know, how do they motivate those guys? How do they inspire those guys? How do they function, um, you know, when they're not playing with a with a first-string, you know, receiver or first-string offensive line? They're going to get reps. Yes, you're going to see a lot of them. Is that a surprise? Nope, not a bit. No, I don't want to see Tannehill at I all, man. I don't want to see Ryan. Mm -hmm. Well, now, I – Week three? Look. Give me one series. I'm good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but this is a completely new offensive coordinator. I know it's not a completely new offense. I don't want to see Julio it's a either. Different OC. It's different weapons. Julio's never played with Ryan Tannehill. Julio and and AJ haven't played together. Like all of this, I want to see a little bit of it because you got to put it together. It's not like it's oh, but look at all these great pieces. They'll mm -hmm. be fine. No need to play. No need to practice. We're good. No, I don't want any of that. I don't want the. We always oh, argue about this. Mike, I every, know, <laughs> I know. Every, every year, every year we argue about it because I am the. Listen, you can't just throw it out there and it work great. When do you want them inserted, Babs? I don't know. Oh come on! Ask me in a week. When, we're like you this don't on want the them show. at all in the preseason. <laughs> we're like this on the show too. Like you want organization. I just want to turn the mic on. Yes. Mm -hmm. We're Perform. very different. Yeah. We're very, we're, no, very, that's we're that's built funny. different. That's well, why it works. But I think we represent the entire fan base with those two views, right? right. Like, because I, I don't want to see, I don't want people getting hurt in the preseason. Let's just roll it out. And, yeah, and no now move. I'll say this: I don't need to see Derrick Henry. I don't need to see Derrick Henry with this offensive line. I don't need to see him with Tannehill or AJ or Julio. I don't. I'm don't you good. want to see if he's running hard? No. No, because I'm sure at one point during the season, I'm going to say he's running soft, and then he's going to, you know, make me eat my words like he does every single year. More from Vrabel uh, when we come back. <laughs> Plus the question, what about Derrick Henry? Do we start to see – oh, yeah, Jim White coming up next. Thank you, Hunk. He said that in our ear. You didn't hear him, but then I said it, so there, it's all good. Uh, but do you start to see some wear and tear on Derrick Henry after these two ma mega productive seasons, or does he keep rolling? Well, he sure as heck Big better question. keep rolling, Brent. I, 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 well, at some point, he's not going to keep rolling. Yeah, okay, this, well, this ain't it. This right isn't now. the year. Okay. Yeah, he don't right? roll, yeah, he don't roll a derby. She's I mean, coming in like, hot, Brent. She's coming in no hot. This is how dare you here. question my running back? How dare you question the king right now? Hey, I asked both sides of that question. I did not did. offer my opinion. You did. You're right. Don't put me in a box, Bab. <laughs> Repent. Babs. I went Bab Senior. All right, Jim White, coming up next, 3HL 104.5 The Zone. <laughs> Non-stop Titans talk and reaction. That's what we do. But he's driven back inside the five, and they fling it to the turf. This is your exclusive home for Titans football. 104.5 The Zone. Come to Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram. That's where you need to go to get that next new vehicle. Maybe you've been thinking about a new car, truck, SUV, or Jeep. Maybe a Sprinter. I just rode in a Sprinter. Those things are nice. If you have a bunch of kids, you need a Sprinter. They have them. At Gupton Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram. Uh, check out the website, guptonmotors.com. You will see the entire inventory there. New and pre-owned vehicles. They've got them all for you. And here's the thing. When you go see my guys at Gupton Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram, 30 minutes from downtown Nashville, 3450 Tom Austin Highway in Springfield, Tennessee. Got to check my oxygen level after that sentence. 
They will offer no uh, pressure to you at all. They simply want you in the vehicle that's right for you and your family, and that's what's going to happen. You take your test drive. You'll go inside. They will help make the numbers work, and it'll be that easy. I bought multiple vehicles from these guys. They are awesome people. Gupton, Dodge, Chrysler, Jeep, Ram. Tell them Brent sent you. Lately, we've been getting a lot of calls and questions about acoustic wave therapy for the treatment of erectile dysfunction. This is a relatively new treatment for Thank you to everybody who knew that. How'd I mess that one up?
That's kind of up your alley, too, though, man. I don't know. I don't know how you messed it up either. I don't either. I didn't catch you because I just agree with you. I'm partial. Sold it good. I'm a good salesman. You missed yes, that you Jeopardy are. question, actually, now. Yeah, Going so back to it because he gave you the point. Yeah, now you owe 100 to the board. I don't even know what y'all are talking about. You got 100 for Jeopardy. Now you owe 100 for Urban Movies to the board. So you got to get two answers right to get back your $100. Yeah, but Don told me I was right twice yesterday. That should, no, that's... no, I said you're not wrong. This guy's always right. Jim Wyatt, TennesseeTitans.com. And he's got a lot to do all of a sudden. Jimmy, what's mm-hmm. up, man? How are you? I'm doing great. I hope you guys are well. Doing uh, doing great, man. Uh, certainly enjoyed the offseason coverage. But, man, we're glad that uh, the guys reported today. Conditioning test uh, went well, according to Mike Vrabel. Did you have to do that? <laughs> yeah, I'm still kind of catching my breath on that. I, did, I, I think I did, and I'm kidding. I didn't. I didn't have to do that. Luckily, I didn't. Uh, but I, but he gave everybody else an excellent report. If I'd have been out there, probably wouldn't have been. Wouldn't have gotten an excellent report. So probably a good thing. Do you think me and Slay could have done the big man test, the 40 yards, 20 times, eight in eight seconds with 30 seconds in between reps? <laughs> you think we could do that? Uh, you guys could probably pull it off. They're both in pretty good shape. Uh, May, may need may need to take a week off after doing it. Wait, but, uh, but hey, I think Slay, you can get it done. What are you eating right now? <laughs> I mean, the Hershey's cookies and cream. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I love it. Hey, you pointed out something today uh, when when you kind of you kind of uh, packaged everything in that was said by Vrabel today into. You're mad at me, aren't you? <laughs> you ain't nothing, man. <laughs> Jim, put this man in your mail bag, your mail bag, and carry him away, please. I was supposed to uh, go at dawn today, not slay. You, that was you want him in the mail bag or yeah. the body bag? No, either one, either is fine. He's <laughs> suffocating both of them. It's cool. Um, you you did a great job of kind of encapsulating, putting into one spot everything that was said by Vrabel today. Uh, again, uh, at Jay Wyatt Sports, you can look for that there, TennesseeTitans.com. But you made a great point that I hadn't thought about. <laughs> slay <Slay's> still. <laughs> Focus. <laughs> Mike Vrabel held a live press conference at St. Thomas Sports Park today for the first time since the week leading up to the AFC Championship game following the 2019 season. That blew my mind. Yeah, yeah it's hard to believe, but it's true. I, you know, we had a live press conference in Indianapolis at the Combine. It's the first time since then, but as far as at this podium, uh, at the facility, you know, we, as we all know, you know, COVID changed everything last year. Everything was done via Zoom. You know, that include Brable's press conferences. That include all the interaction with players. Things are different now. Uh, you know, a few more chairs sprinkled out underneath that podium. And, and uh, you know, certainly going to have to approach things a little bit different as far as putting recorders up on the podium because players will be there. And some of those, and you have to keep your distance from those guys uh, that are in tiered statuses. But live press, co- press conferences are back. Uh, which is great, you know, and, and we're going to have an opportunity to talk to about a half dozen players after each day of training camp practices. Uh, it'll be at a difference. There's going to be a you know system set up where you can have an opportunity to interview these guys. It's not going to be crowded around like years past, but um, it, I think it's great. I mean, and you can you know the interaction is good. You know, easier to ask follow up questions. Yeah. Uh, you know, obviously you can record them and uh, so many different advantages and. Um, and hopefully, you know, as we move forward in the fall, you know, we'll see a lot more things return to normal, like, you know, full stadiums and, and, um, and access that we didn't have in years past, but it's still part of a process, you know, as, as, you know, the league adjusts to players who are vaccinated, who players who are not vaccinated, you know, the country is going to have to adjust too to a, a virus that just isn't going away. And uh, you, so in the back of your mind, you always know and kind of keep your fingers crossed that you hope you don't have to to retreat a little bit in some of the things that are happening. Don't say that, Jimmy. Um, along those lines, obviously, a lot of uh, Vrabel's press conference kind of uh, centered around COVID and vaccinations and how that all works. Just as far as because because Coach Vrabel, somebody had said, oh, where are you on the 85 percent, you know, kind of vaccination team rate and all that? And he was like, I don't, I don't know where that number comes from. I actually think it comes from college. And, and that's the SEC's number on if you have an 85 percent 
uh, a team that is 85% vaccinated, then you, you're you kind of exempt from some of the COVID testing protocols. What exactly has the NFL lined up and out put out there for these teams when it comes to vaccination and COVID protocols? How different is it from last year? And what do we actually know in how it will all work? Well, I mean, it's a, a lot different as far as what guys have to do that are vaccinated and guys who aren't vaccinated. That includes being tested every day if you're uh, if you're not vaccinated, where you have to get tested only once every 14 days if you're vaccinated. You, you can't uh, you know you can't gather in uh, you know in the meeting rooms and in the in the weight room and uh, and really around other players who are, uh, you know, are vaccinated, you know, it's going to impact travel. Uh, you know, when you go on the road, just where you can go, whether you can go leave the restaurant, whether you can visit family members. I mean, uh, I think the hope is, and, and I do think things and Mike Vrabel, he didn't give a percentage of, of number of guys who have been vaccinated. But I do think the Titans are, have made great strides here in recent weeks. Um, where it's not going to be that big of an issue. But is the team 100% yet? No. And uh, I think that's what you hope to get to a point where it's not too drastic. I will say it's completely different than last year, and especially at the early part of the year where you were trying to adjust to this and, and, and kind of learning things on the fly. There's a system in place. Still got tracking devices. Their own players still going to do the contact tracing. Still going to force, you know, force guys to wear masks who are not vaccinated. But uh, I do think the training staff and the coaching staff, and everybody involved, has a much better handle on it now than than obviously last year. Hey Jim, um, did we expect anything other than Dupree and Farley being on the the, the injured list, or did we expect those guys to come in and be ready to go? Well, I think they'll be ready at some point in August, but it, you know, I think it's going to be a process on when each guy returns. I mean, I, I fully expected Farley and Dupree to be on that list at the start. Mm-hmm. Caleb on the NFL list because of an injury, um, you know, because of an injury that really started back in college, and then Dupree on the PUP. I actually thought you know there's a chance when. June camp broke that you know, you'd have guys like AJ Brown on there and Taylor Wan on there. So the fact that those guys aren't on there is a positive sign. Now for Farley Dupree, and I'm going to go ahead and throw Tyson Bryo and Jeremy McNichols and Aaron Brewer, all those guys in there too, because they're in the same process. They're, they continue to work out. They continue to rehab. They're able to do meetings, but they can't take part in workouts on the field, whether that's practice or walkthroughs. And then it's just a matter of when they feel healthy enough to turn those guys loose and when those guys are able to pass a physical. And and it's not all going to be at the same time. It's going to be different time frame for each of those guys. And something that Mike Rabel alluded to today, you know, even guys like Lawan, who I mentioned previously, just because he's not on one of these lists doesn't necessarily mean, hey, he hits the ground running tomorrow and he's a full go. I mean, uh, I think him and AJ and some of these other guys who have been limited in the off season, they're going to have their reps watched and and um, it's not going to be practice all day, every day. Um, so the important thing is to get these guys ready for week one of the season, uh, not necessarily day one of camp. And one of the other thing I should probably mention is, you know, camp is so much different now than it used to be. You know, the start of camp now is not, hey, get out there and you're pretty much going to 100 miles an hour, you know, day two uh, in pads. It's, it is more of a OTA look with just helmets and shorts at the start. You eventually can get to shells, but they're not going to be practicing pads until next week. And uh, so that gives maybe guys a little bit more time to kind of get their – feet under him and, and feeling better. There he is, Jim Wyatt, every Tuesday at 345 here on 3HL, at Jay Wyatt Sports on Twitter, TennesseeTitans.com. Thank you, Jim. Appreciate you. Thanks, Jim. Okay, have a good one. Thank back. you. Thank you. All right, appreciate it. All right, there he goes, uh, Jim Wyatt. All right, when we come back, hear more from Mike Vrabel following today's uh, check-in and conditioning test. <laughs> all of those things. You still mad at me? <laughs> no. <laughs> we'll be right back. Coming up tomorrow with Buck Rising. We will be live out at St. Thomas Sports Park for Titans training camp. 
General Manager John Robinson will join us at 1115. Will Compton, of course, in the noon hour. Don't miss a minute. The Buck Rising Show, tomorrow, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. on 104.5 The Zone. Nashville, what up? With this red-hot real estate market, one of the most important decisions you will ever make is who to trust when it's time to sell your home. What's up, people? This is Ron Slay, and if you're ready to take advantage of this market, Mark Spain Real Estate is the most trusted real estate team in the U.S. Mark Spain Real Estate is local and one of the fastest-growing real estate companies in Nashville. Mark Spain Real Estate sells more than 21 homes per day. One of their clients, Michelle, said, Mark Spain Real Estate went above and beyond. Their guaranteed offer came in higher than expected, and they exceeded our expectations. Selling my home with them was the easiest experience. There are no showings, no open houses, no stress. It's that simple. Find out what Mark Spain's guaranteed offer would be on your home. There's no obligation. Go to MarkSpain.com today. That's MarkSpain.com or call 855-299-SOLD and start packing. I'm Amy Lawrence.
Going northbound right at Mount Juliet Road. And we still have a wreck blocking the right shoulder in Millersville at I-65 southbound right before we get to Highway 31. Also at Gallatin Pike at Conference Drive, we have an accident. And another wreck in East Nashville at Ellington Parkway heading northbound between Cleveland Street and Douglas Avenue. I'm Joshua Clay with traffic on your home for Titans football. 104.5 The Zone. From the WinBet studio, win with WinBet. WGFX Gallatin, Nashville. Get the very latest out of Titans training camp here on your home for Titans football. Trending now at 104.5 The Zone. Good afternoon. I am Joe Hunk. And yes, Titans training camp started today. Conditioning as well as Mike Grable, head coach of the Titans, meeting with the media. And obviously one big conversation had to be had because everybody is wondering about vaccinations and exactly where the Titans are. And here's what Coach Vabral had to say. I'm comfortable with where we're at. We continue to add recently as yesterday. Uh, to the to the vaccination list and, and guys are continuing to do uh, research uh, to educate themselves to make a personal decision that we've said it was all along and, and hopefully one that they can come to that will will help them and percentages I'm very comfortable with where they are um, and and I think they've they've continued to go up and I would expect them to go up remember Buck, Buck Risen we will be out at training camp tomorrow you can listen to him right here on 104.5 the zone and don't forget that obviously the other big news when it comes to football in the state of Tennessee is that most likely at some point in time, Oklahoma and Texas are going to be visiting Knoxville as well as Nashville because both have applied to join the SEC. For all your foundation repair and waterproofing needs, visit USSTN.com. Breaking news at once on your home for the Titans, the Vols, and 3HL. This is 104.5 The Zone. The 3HL with Brent Doherty, Don Davenport, and Everybody, somebody has to be under. She said, she, I said everybody was over, so we all lost. She said, "Yep." So I won. <laughs> what? She was the closest loser. Yeah, <laughs> that's the Price is Right rules. Yeah, it was a game the show. Price right is there. wrong. <laughs> price is wrong. You literally just said that. Oh, you did. That yeah. <laughs> all right. Because you were like you're just killing yourself about being right or mm-hmm. winning or whatever you think you yep. did. I'm on a I'm on a tear today. You are. You are. It all started with traffic and like a drive through episode again. I'm still saying that my coming in hot version is the right one. Here's the other thing, people. You're probably right. People on the streets that see this this Auburn girl coming through, she's packing. Get out of her way. Definitely packing. <laughs> Have you had any Starbucks episodes lately? Oh, no. <laughs> no, I have not. Mike Vrabel. I can't get did past Did Slay this. hear that? I'm, yeah. I don't know. I did. You've heard about that yeah, one. I heard yeah. you got wild. Yeah, well, I, I think wild. he was told about that in the interview process because, you know, <laughs> if you're going to jump into something, you might as well know everything. <laughs> but to be fair to Davenport on that one, if she's going to Starbucks and hasn't yet placed the order, that means she hasn't had her caffeine. Right. So anything's possible. Right. Well, and She's and- running in the red. But but also I'm a mushroom cloud laying yeah. Montana, Florida, Montana, that's, Florida. That's right. That's right. I'm super fly to your team. Oh. I'm the guns of the Navarone. <laughs> she now knows all these references. Like I quote the crap out of Pulp Fiction. Yes, you do. <laughs> I know. Now never I know it. it. And now she yeah, she can relate now. Yeah. All right, I Mike Vrabel, Vrabel held, by the way, I'm Brent Doherty. This is Don Davenport. Hi, Don. Hi. 
This is Ron Slay. I'm in the building. I'm in the building. Hey, I'm in the building. You jumped yourself. I almost did. I'm in the building. I'm going in. Because I said. I'm in the building. I'm in the building. Mm. Sometimes I want the natural. Just the natural yep. sleigh. <laughs> natural oh, I've sleigh. got it. I've got it in the holster, ready to go at any point in time. Now, <laughs> since we're talking about packing, I'm, about packing. <laughs> <You're> packed. <laughs> I'm packing that sleigh open. Good to, good to know. Sleigh open. I like it when you what? jump yourself, though. It's always funny to me because you think that there's going to be a delay for Hunk, so yep. he, you're just waiting for him to kind of be. But the, he's he nailed it today. But the first time that I don't do it, then Hunk will leave me out here. It's true. On the sleigh floating island. on that, floating on that ledge. <laughs> just out there floating. I'm on a boat with T Pain. Mike what Vrabel. stood out to you for Vrabel today? That, that this was the first live press conference at St. Thomas Sports Park since 20. The, fall, the the AFC Championship game week. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. That's, that is wild. That's crazy. Teresa Walker again with the first question from Tokyo while what covering time the Olympics. was it in Tokyo when she uh, asked her question? Do about we know? 3 a.m. Oh, my God. Rob Thomas. That's dope. She must be lonely. She probably is. She's in Tokyo quarantined in her hotel room, except yeah. when she goes to an empty basketball arena. Do and that. she spent 19 hours at the airport to actually get in that place. Yeah, at least. So it's only media at these games. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no There's fans. Like, there that's, were 50, 50 dignitaries at the opening ceremony from other points. I don't know who they are. Does the media get to cheer at the games? There's no cheering in the media you're, boxes. You're, you're working. There's no cheering. I, I will say that it's very unique how when Japan is participating in a certain event, there's a few more media members that are there. You think so? Yeah, there, there are quite a few more media members in attendance for all the, of the Japanese events. Well, that would make sense. It's yeah. in there. It is, but it's just It'd be the same thing in the U.S. Where are we with the medal count? It's been U.S. and Japan forever. Yeah. Not forever. I, I mean, want to say been doing this for like three days. U.S. has 25 medals as we speak. See, here you go. You're pulling on me. Like, you come, <laughs> yeah, with, yeah, yeah. you come with stuff that may or may not be right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to well, figure out. Well, it's different, too, because events are going on, but then you can watch them not ha! live, tape delayed ha! in prime time later. Uh-oh, he might be right. 25 medals for the U.S. uh, at the moment, uh, but Japan has 10 gold. Get them, Hulk. USA has 9 gold. How many medals does Japan have? Uh, They have 18. Okay. China has 21. China has 21. It's 6.08 in the morning there right now, so everybody's at Japanese Waffle House. (laughs) What they serve there? Probably the same stuff. (laughs) Yeah. How do you get your hash browns? Um, I don't know the, the names of them anymore. I just like tomatoes, onions, so scattered... I know scattered onions capped, in there, man. Chunks? Capped is oh, mushrooms. Capped. Oh, I hate mushrooms. I like oh, really? tomatoes, whatever tomatoes is, and onions. That's Hey, but y'all just messed me up. Random. How could... That's a random hash brown order. I like mushrooms on anything, Babs. I did not I know this. Too. And onions. Uh, 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 good for the blood. It's mm-hmm. not good onions. for the breath. But lucky for you, everybody wears masks nowadays. <laughs> Except for me, because I gotta smell it. But how can I? So I can go to a Titans game and don't cheer for the Titans? Uh, if you're in the press box, you can't. No, you can't. That's yeah. frowned upon. I mean, some people, there are some. <laughs> Probably will pull that card, there man. There are, yeah, there mm-hmm. are some. Really? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. But there That's are some. That's why I don't some... go in there. I go in the crowd with my people. With yes. my people. That's it. I will say that there are some press boxes that you go to that they're, the local media is cheering for. Yeah. The team. But like that the is... SEC tournament with all the media people wearing yeah. blue. Yeah. Yes. That happens. That's a thing. That happens. Let There's me ask you this. Kentucky, it absolutely happens when it comes when it comes care. to Kentucky basketball. And they no, don't care. There are different rules for that. So yes. Babs, are you at the that at the um what was it, the extra point kick return game? Auburn, Alabama? The kick six. Kick the six. kick six. I was yeah. not there. No, but, if you were there. If I were there. No. So you was, could not have she cheered. Was, she was covering another game and got you got that info from somebody else, right? Oh, that stinks. Not only was I was covering a Louisville game, it was and Louisville-Houston. You, like, you were told Auburn's oh. about to win. Or no, Alabama's about to win. Yes. You were told that. God, that was back. Charlie Strong was at Louisville. That's how mm-hmm. long ago it was. And so my producer got in my ear. So I, if you've ever been to Louisville Stadium, it's like no cell service. Like yeah. when you're down on the sidelines, you get Papa no John, zero cell yeah. service. It's yeah. like it's all concrete or something and right. you can't get out. So my producer is in my ear. So I can't I can't find it on my phone. I can't nobody's text. I can't do anything because I have zero service. Mm-hmm. 
And, you know, like when I text you and it yep. comes back with an exclamation point, like not it doesn't really, go through yeah. because it's a, not, really. not an iPhone. Yeah. yeah. So uh, anyway, yeah. I digress. Yeah, I don't need don't need so that. my producer gets in my ear and is like, oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. You, oh, Auburn's really? going to win. And I'm like, <laughs> what? T- what happened? Put it in my monitor. Put it in my monitor down here because yeah. they have it in the trunk. They yeah. have access to all of it. I'm like, put it in my monitor. <laughs> yeah. No, we're in the middle of the game. I'm like, put it in my monitor right now. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Never Ooh. did it. The Never. Came he up. was like, Auburn won. You're going to die when you see wow. how. Nobody Ooh, ever told out. me what happened. <laughs> Nothing. Drop so the then, octave. into the game, I finally walk out of there and then my phone just blows up. I have, you know, Text 280 text messages at that point because I get service and it all comes, yeah, crazy. So if you were at the game, would you have been able to hold your composure and be like, no, I'm Ooh, not cheering? No, but here's the deal. If that <laughs> would have happened, saying. though. She's done Auburn games. If that would have happened on the other side, if it was, like, reversed and it was Alabama, mm-hmm. I wouldn't have been able to hold hold myself no. Like professional exactly. either because that's amazing. That is. I mean, because of what a finish that was. Yeah, that's well, that's weird. That was a fifty-six yard field goal attempt to try to win the game. And the the thing about it is, and Slay again, you'll learn this stuff is the last five or six minutes of the game, you go down on the field. So all well, of them used yes. to. Well, yeah, well, you, you used, used to, to yeah. and, and there you did. So all of the media members were actually on the opposite side of the field where Chris Davis caught the ball mm-hmm. because they were set up for the field goal to go through. Right. So that's where everybody set up to take the picture. And when Chris Davis ran it back, he ran it back to an empty sideline because there was nobody set on that yeah. side, no cameras, no local TV, nothing, because everybody had already set up on the other side. Dang, I see what you're saying, Slay, but, yeah, it is it is uh, severe. If I'm there working that game, I'm not cheering because I'm there working, and it's my job to We're be professional. Yes. Yeah. So, they, so, so, I, so, in other words, if I have the opportunity to go into the media booth, just don't go in there. You just go get food and walk out. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. that. If you're going to cheer, yeah. <laughs> Now I'm going to cheer. Well, well, then you can't. Then you be come in sit there. with me. Yep. With my people. Then, then I'm going to drink beer. You go sit with your people and yeah. have a beer and cheer. There's no <laughs> way possible. I'm going to hi- high five everybody around me when good things happen, and mm-hmm. that's the way it's going to be. Mm-hmm. Man, you got to have some great composure, man. Oh, you just can't be a fan. <laughs> I'm, I'm a fan of the game first. You can but do it. It just, it just changes how you watch the game. It, it changes just... how you watch the game, and sometimes it takes a it, it, – because people always ask me that. Like, how can you – I worked that Auburn Jacksonville State game. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, oh! Yeah. Do you remember that? Oh, I mean, Jacksonville it, Auburn, State should have won. Yeah, yes, they like Auburn. I, I mean, I was like, man, Auburn's about to lose this game. The great yeah. Jeremy Johnson quarterback. Yeah. Fiasco. Oh, that was a debacle. But, but in that moment, <laughs> like, I, I was there to cover the game, right. and it was, oh wow, this would be a hell of a story if Jacksonville State's able to beat Auburn at home in mm-hmm. Jordan Hare. Like, I'm covering the game and the story, and so I'm immediately just preparing for, okay, Jacksonville State's head coach yeah. and kicker and whoever else yeah. for because they're about to win the game, you know. So, like, once you're in the moment, y- you'll realize how simple it is to not be a fan. I know. Mm. That's mm. – more from Vrabel when we come back. Six one five seven three seven. Apparently, Slay is not going in the press box. Yeah, that's <laughs> we gotta keep tough. him out. Like, I, we had this conversation. I yeah. got chill bumps watching Tennessee Florida game when Tennessee came back some years ago. Come sit with me, man. Yeah, I, <laughs> and I wish they would have told me you can't cheer. <laughs> they me. might honestly, they might not fighting. tell you, but the next time you try to get a credential, <laughs> you won't be, like, be in there. <laughs> James D. Underhill on Twitter. <laughs> Total packages today on my FedEx route 666. Oh, Ooh. I'm sorry, James. Put it on the Underhills bill. National Playmakers Academy, please tell me you agree when I say at Ron Slate 35 does not know how to eat or order hash browns at Waffle House. Agreed. We're just talking. <laughs> just people just talking. We'll be right back. <laughs> Getting you geared up for another Titan season. Take your roll. On your home for Titans football and flagship for Titans radio, 104.5 The Zone. All of y'all have gifting responsibilities throughout the calendar year, every year. And it would make a lot of sense for you to know my friends, Brandon and Salem Amomaly and their crew at Brentwood Jewelry because uh, you can walk in there and uh, they can help you out with any of your gifting responsibilities, birthdays, weddings, anniversaries, Christmas, what, uh, what else? Graduation. There's always something going on. These guys can help you. If you haven't already heard, 
Nashville's premier timepiece dealer, Brentwood Jewelry, not only has the best selection in watches, but they are also the go-to spot for pre-owned Rolexes. Vintage or current models own a great pre-owned Rolex for a fraction of the cost. Every watch has been meticulously serviced to ensure the highest level of performance and is presented with a two-year warranty, this watch. Brentwood Jewelry, now carrying the Hamilton watch line. Hamilton watches are innovative, iconic, and known for American spirit and Swiss precision. They can hook you up with any and everything you're thinking about. Custom jewelry design uh, crew is amazing. Um, You can check them out. 7012 Church Street, located in the heart of Brentwood, just off Franklin Road. Exceptional style, exceptional deals every day. For more than 50 years, visit BrentwoodJewelry.com. What's going on, guys? Buck Rising back here with you. My good friend Gary Ashton recently told me that people walk up to him all the time.
Super NHL 104.5 The Zone. With Don Davenport and Ron Slay. I'm Brent Doherty. Joe Hunk producing. How did the kick six come into the show? Um, that made a lot of Slay people was, upset. Uh, I know. It made them upset? Oh, yeah. Bama fans don't. Look, Bama fans can remember all of the losses in the last 10 years. Like, it's easy. Because there's they, not that many of them. Count them on a hand. Yeah. I don't think that's enough but, to get upset about. And to answer your question, the media <laughs> couldn't cheer for that game or couldn't cheer for the kick six because they were having to turn around to see if it was even if Chris Davis stepped out of bounds or not. So they were having to watch the video board. How about Ron Slay in the Georgia press box when Josh Dobbs completed the Hail Mary? Yeah. That's what, what would have happened there? He Bananas? Be beating, on, beating on the windows? Banned forever from the Georgia press box. It'd be like oh, the Gladly, too. Just the a brawl. Yeah, whole, gladly. The whole Georgia media Gets in with Slay. <laughs> Gladly. Gladly. Uh, and the good thing, I'm going to challenge all of them. Like, I'm not going to go, I'm not gonna go peacefully. I'm, I'm going to challenge all of them. If y'all going to ban me, let's get banned. Hey, this is not the time for peace. <laughs> it's down the road. Exactly. Like, let's get it. What's Ramon say? Choose violence. Choose violence. Hit the button. <laughs> I'm going to hit the button. Ah. And see, I got my people with me. Mayor be there. Babs will be there. Babs, I can see Babs now biting somebody. I've been in the crowd in Georgia. <laughs> Man, that was one of my favorite things to do when I was a student, go to road games. That was yeah. so much fun. Yeah. I never got to mm, I never got to do that. I never got to experience that. See, I wanted to. You were, you shouldn't have been an athlete. Then you could have just, you know, <laughs> no. had fun as a student. <laughs> I really wanted I really wanted to go to those games, especially LSU, dude. You could have gone to I the road to go. football games, couldn't you? Well, no, y'all yeah, were playing. But I, uh, yeah, I don't think they would. Yeah. I don't think they would have. We were going to Mississippi that. State. It, I was in a car with like four other dudes. We were going to Mississippi State. We stopped in Tuscaloosa, rode around campus, blasting Rocky Top. Really? But this was back That's back then. Tennessee did. was beating them. Yeah, yeah. But you know, everybody on Alabama's campus is like, "What in the heck? What, what are y'all doing? Yeah. Like, we don't even play y'all." Yeah, this exactly. <laughs> I would have did something silly like that. It wouldn't have ended well. We went to Gainesville a couple times. I can see Coach Green now. South well, Carolina was. South Carolina was fun. I, South Carolina fans are legit, man. No yeah. matter what's going on with their team, they're there. Didn't Bab? I think Bab said that they have a great environment. Did he said they have a great environment. Yeah, but it's like the stadium is off campus in like a fairgrounds oh, place, it? so it's a weird, weird vibe. Like outside, I don't it's, like those campuses. It's like that. still really it feels, good. Yeah. It's really good, but it yeah. feels more like it to me. It feels more like an NFL environment mm-hmm. than a than a SEC mm-hmm. college football environment. But when they in, yeah, when they run on the to field, get to. yeah, yeah, when they run on the field though, I said serious space odyssey mm-hmm. and all that crap. Mm-hmm. I mean, really cool stuff, not crap. <laughs> it's just crap. how I talk. Yeah, um, really fun. I like I like I like stadiums on campus. That just it does something. It does something to the campus. Like to be able to leave the stadium and go you on the campus. I'm gonna go back to the dorm real quick. Walk I'm gonna meet y'all down on such and such. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, back in the 90s when we were in Florida, like, everybody left at halftime because mm-hmm. they could come back in. <laughs> well, the fraternity houses are right there. Oh. So they just, they at halftime, they they go oh, outside and get, get blitzed. Man, keg stands, there's all kind of stuff going on. I know it is. That was, I know it's wild. Girls go to the games in bikini tops. I that's, a wild, that. that's a wild place when Spurrier was out there. Oh, I bet. It's still a wild place. Probably is. But back then they knew that not only are they going to win, they're going to win like 65 yeah. to 7. Yeah. They're going to pound you. And I don't care who you are. The Swamp. Yeah. Loud, man. Swamp or LSU? Swamp in the 90s Parole. was louder than what I have exp- I've been to two night games at LSU. The Swamp in the 90s was louder. Really? Yep. Ooh. And they say LSU is really Death Valley. Mm-hmm. Like, it's. Oh, it's legit. Yeah. That's what I heard. Night Too game legit. there? Yeah. That's a different level. That's what the player was telling me. He said you could really feel the field bouncing. Yeah. When they got real loud in LSU. Yeah, it's that's pretty how cool. Virginia Tech is too. Mm-hmm. Um, um I, Yeah, go, go ahead. ahead. Oh, I was Okay, I'll go. Say, I'll go. Let me go. No, you go. well, because we just talked about I mean, I said that's how it is at Virginia Tech. Yeah. People have brought up what's Notre Dame gonna do, which apparently reports are Notre Dame is very happy in their own little individual ro- world, but I'm. So I am funny. just. I'm curious what the SEC is going to look like in five years. Notre Dame's like the popular guy that people either love or hate. That's standing over in the corner, just watching the party. Yeah, yeah. just Th- chilling. That can't last though, can it? Not oh, with yeah. not with I what's mean, going on. They they have their own TV contract with NBC. They get their own money that way. They don't have to share it with anybody. They're they're very happy with where they are right now. 
Yeah, but now I I think I think conference. with the college football playoff and and all of that with the expansion and and not going to be able to get a buy. They really should be left out because although I think those those expansion rules are probably all going to change too, right? If you have super conferences, it's gonna it's gonna well, be a completely saying, different look. Yeah, they were saying that they were leaning toward conference champion and then complete at larges right and the conference like you couldn't be a top four seed if you weren't a college a, a conference champion mm-hmm. yeah. which means they would not be a top four seed ever yeah ever right yeah. which means that they wouldn't get a buy ncaa gotta hate this who the ncaa yeah, exactly has to who? Hate this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah you're exactly right babs yeah. yep I mean, goodness gracious. What's that game where you take the pieces of wood out and... and Jenga. Jenga. Yeah, that's what the NCAA is. Jenga. Just one more pull from going down. That's what the NCAA is right now. Uh Uh-uh, not that piece. Put it back. Yeah. Yeah. Man, that's Hold on, Greg. Hold on. (laughs) Don't pull that one yet. Get up, Craig. (laughs) (laughs) Now we go back to Boys and the (laughs) Friday. No, Friday. Friday. (laughs) But same action. (laughs) Babs, you know that? Friday? Yeah. That's one of the best movies ever. It is. Look at, see. I might not have seen a whole lot of movies, but I have seen That's why I'm Major with you. League and Friday. See? Those are the two. Those well, you need the to. Two. <laughs> Those are the two <laughs> best ones. I was I mean, just about to say, well, you need to depend on her. She's there. She's there. X gets the square. <laughs> there you go. Miss Parker. Thank you, Babs. Um, Miss Parker. Yeah. All right, and so we disagree on, like, I always say, I only want to see Tannehill for one series in the whole preseason. Right. And, and Don's like, no, 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 you've got to you got to make sure everything's functioning well offensively. You've had some new pieces, all this. We also disagree on this one. Defense. Can't be worse. Can be worse. <laughs> can be. You know what? One of – Mike Frabel got asked a lot about defenses today, yep. and at one point he did say something of – you know, well, it wasn't, you know, it was bad. It was it, it, basically along the lines of it wasn't that bad. Do you all remember this comment during his press conference today? Yeah, and I was he, like, yes, it was. Here's part of what he said about the defense. Yeah. A, a lot. You know, I mean, a lot. I can't wait to watch these guys play, practice, perform. Um, you know, because we go back and our job is obviously with, with coaches, especially you're looking at the that the negatives you can remember every every time you called something and it and they hit you on it or something bad happened but you know when you go back and you watch there's a lot of great snaps there's a lot of great defense um but we have to be better we have to be better on third down we have to go and and force the quarterback and make him be uncomfortable and we have to cover guys at the sticks and and all those things that we teach um because again that's where the problems occurred i don't think that it was like you know just miserable you know there's a lot of good snaps in there and then unfortunately when you when you play bad third down defense you're just giving them more opportunities and you know we know with more opportunities comes more production so you know that's something that we we hit hard in the off season you know we were teaching it and practicing it um so hopefully that that will start to show up and then we'll be you know we'll be obviously practicing it out here can't be worse well, according to him, it wasn't miserable. It could be worse. Yeah, that's 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 a tough take right there. <laughs> it was uh, miserable. Yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> um, that although I will take. say it can be worse. That's where I fall on it. But that's what I want to see. I, I that's I think that's where a lot of people are right now. Is is what will this defense looks look like? And with a lot of youth and a lot of guys coming off injury and. You, you know, gotta get Caleb Farley out there. Have, you yeah, gotta get having Bud to Dupree step in a different role, like you, th- those players are gonna have to have reps together to feel each other, to to get a feel for it, and to figure it all out. Especially when you're looking at that secondary that's extremely young. Right. By right. the way, uh, Vrabel mentioned several players as guys who made significant progress this offseason. Tight end Anthony Ferkser. Hmm. Remember when we had that talk, who's going to benefit more yep. from Julio Jones being added to the roster? And I went, Ferkser. Yeah. I'm so excited about Ferks. He also mentioned defensive lineman Tier Tart. That's Ramon, boy. And cornerback Christian Fulton. Hmm. And he said this, quote, I see them now and they look different. They don't look like the same guys we coached last year, end quote. Guess what? They sure as hell better because <laughs> they're counting on him. She's so hard line over here yeah, on this I, defense, man. Yes, yes, she but is. it's true. She got it so pissed true. watching them play D last year, yeah. especially on so third mad. down. Third yeah. down. I couldn't take third down. I could not. Like, the that thing went off in my head. 
watching this defense on third down to where I just couldn't take it anymore. Her oxygen level was dropping. I mean, you know where they were good? And I don't know the numbers that just eyeball watching them last year. You know where they were good? Third and short. I always I was yeah. always hoping for like third and one as opposed to mm-hmm. like third and seventeen. Third and seventeen, they're gonna pick it up and just piss you yeah. off. No doubt. Yeah. It, third and it one was crazy. Either Big Jeff's gonna slam some dude mm-hmm. before he get like as he's getting a handoff, or Rashawn Evans is gonna jump over the top of everybody and just mm-hmm. plow people. Yep. So outside of third and long and third getting long. to the quarterback, this is a solid defense. I mean, yeah, yeah, you know, those things aren't important at all. <laughs> just so, so everything but the impact to clear plays it all up. Made, yeah. it, that's how you describe <laughs> last year's team. Yeah, I mean, just like saying it's not miserable. I mean, right. there, there you go. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Outside of that, I, I feel what he's. I understand yeah. what he's saying. No. Um, I mean, I, I, I will say this in what Mike Vrabel said, and I get it. It's him standing at a podium and. And he he could be full of all the Chiano in the world, you know. I get it. It's it's a press conference. He's friends with that guy. It's, well, uh, <laughs> I understand all of that, but I I believed him when he talked about his belief in this defense. Like I believe that they're going to be better. I believe that it was a focus and and. That it, just listening to him talk, I'm like, oh, it d- okay. H- here's okay, one thing. Braves, I got gotcha. you. Here's one thing that could happen that's a lot different than last year: Jim Schwartz. So if the yeah. egos involved in that in that room are are put to the side and they let and that all dude in check help, you know, because I mean, he created like he went through it all last uh, during the offseason right. and presented a report over there. And so if they allow him to be him and to help. Then yeah, I mean they could, they could be a lot better on defense, I think, because uh, you know that 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 dude knows his stuff. There's no doubt. I mean, he was like the youngest defense coordinator in the league, right? When Jeff Fisher gave him that post. Yeah, because Coach Mack talked ago. about that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So let's just be healthy going out there. I think we, I, I, health is the big thing. Health is the thing. Uh, I think health we are is right. the thing for everybody. I think we're gonna be all right. So, Jim White, um, if you missed it, told us Bud Dupree and mm-hmm. uh, Caleb Farley, you're looking at August, sometime in August. So, Which I, I mean, think is good. I mean, sometime in August. They're is, not going to rush them. What, what more can you ask for, right? Yeah, no need. Be ready to go when the season starts. Make sure you, you're ready enough to develop some kind of chemistry with your teammates, and here we go. A lot of talk today about the kicker, too. The kicker debacle that has been I'll in the Titans you. blood the last couple of years. I'll tell you right now who the kicker's gonna be. Who? Steven Goskowski. Watch. Really? Then they're going to get him. I mean, these guys are gonna battle it out. Tucker, Tucker McCann, McCann and Blake Hey Hey Bill. How do you say his last name? I don't well, know who he, the other one I know Tucker there. McCann just from all the Missouri games I got right. to work and watching him. <laughs> yeah. All back the in the day. <laughs> well Yeah. I mean he's legit, but he, he wasn't healthy last Ghost year, last year so you he couldn't see him. He still lives here. Yeah. Vrabel oh, let I you know, know where Vrabel he said that today. Oh, he said it in his first time. Do you have that audio? He lives right down the street. I do have right? him talking yeah. about the kickers. Yeah. Let's, let's do it. it. I know it's out of order, Honk. I don't mean that to I don't mean to do that to you, bro. But yeah. you're a really talented guy, so yeah, I figured Hunk you could. Let. That's, that's, that's light, light you, work, though. You could go with cut number seven, Vrabel, about the kickers. Well, well, we'll work with those guys right now and see where it goes. You know, we're, we're comfortable and – and, and positive that those guys are going to go out, compete, um, give Tucker an opportunity. You know, he wasn't available to us last year. He was really um, impressive uh, as we worked our way through training camp and then and then got injured. And so, you know, I think it's, uh, and so does John, obviously, the right thing to do to, to let those guys compete. And then if, like any other position, if we have to, to bring guys in, we can do that. Is Gaskowski a potential option down the road? I until he retires, I would imagine that anybody would be a potential, you know, but I don't know. You know I, I think he lives down the street, but I'm not sure. I don't know. <laughs> I think I know his address. Yeah. A hundred percent Mike Vrabel knows where Steven got. Yeah, I'll swing by and pick on, him up man. on the way to practice. Consult the manual. <laughs> <laughs> he's there just in case. He's got, him, he's got him on his GPS iPhone. Cases. Yep, he's sitting at the house right now. <laughs> they got the tracking devices. I mean, there, you know. let these guys battle. You know what you got in the ghost man it's kind of up and down yeah i hope the ones battling will give That's you some uh say. more is consistency it, is it worth the battle is it worth to watch the battle yeah okay. i mean I, there are sometimes fans that are very upset that there was not any kind of move made at this position mm-hmm. 
By the way, Slay, you brought up the lack of sacks. So they they had 19 sacks last year, nine in the last two games. Hey, he turned it on. <laughs> that's hey, that's promising. They have five against the Ravens. See that Just right there. Score. Yeah, that means oh yeah, we about to get after it. So I yeah, I'm ready for the D. I don't think the, I think the D turned the corner at the, the last two games of the season. Well, it's a completely different one. <laughs> Right now, what's the Drink your up. water. Sorry. She meant turn the corner and got on 65 <laughs> and left. <laughs> and left. That's what she meant. Hey, go home. <laughs> Dawn's got this big jug of water that she drinks on every day, and we give her hell about it because she's never, like, where she's supposed to be. It's got, like, lines on it to tell you what time you're supposed to be. Where, what time are you at right now? <laughs> According to my water jug, it's 9 a.m. That's just, like Tokyo. She just got Tokyo. up. She just got up. Yep, that's it. Tokyo. She's on Tokyo water. That's Tokyo water. <laughs> Let's just say I would not survive training camp with a heat index of 105 no. right oh now doing conditioning tests. Dehydrate. Y'all, working on pavement or laying pipe out there on Broadway or whatever you're doing, just <laughs> hydrate. Please. They're laying pipe on D- Division. Have you drove, driven up Division? No, I know they keep They got on. that yes. thing all Don't torn stop. up. Yeah. Yes. It is horrible. Like, they close down roads. Gulps, man. All right. Uh <laughs> out here. Um, how much more Vrabel do we have? A ton. What do y'all want to hear Vrabel about? COVID tough on defenses? Dupree and Farley update? Maybe we should do that one. Injured guys adjusting? (laughs) Julio leadership. I like that. I like leadership. It's the most important time of the year. You talking about that? Yeah. Go do. And vaccines. He goes two minutes on vaccines. That's tough. What are you he has to. Because every time you name a new one, I pull it up going, all right, is this the one he's about to tell oh, me? It's to break hit? time, dude. We're going to do it when we come back. <laughs> Stay tuned. 3 HL, 104.5 The Zone. Do I have everybody's attention now? Coming up tomorrow morning. Miss any of today's show? Download the podcast, rate, review, and subscribe. We know you're busy, fam. We got you. You can also interact with us anytime on Twitter at Jmart and Ramon. We are petty on Twitter anytime and all the time. Like cheese and bacon, we make your day better. We're Jmart and Ramon. Jmart and Ramon, tomorrow morning from 6 to 10 a.m. on 104.5 The Zone. I'll tell you who will make your day better. Loan Pronto, they'll make your day better, especially if you're thinking about refinancing your loan because home loan rates right now, incredible, and back down again. And Loan Pronto wants to get your new home loan and help you lock in the rate of your lifetime. Take advantage of Loan Pronto's special zero-cost refi program. I just did it, and it was easy. Their all-digital process makes it simple for you. It's fast, and most loans get closed in 14 days. Mine got closed in less than that. Most don't even require an appraisal. You can snag this super low rate. There aren't junk fees. There are no closing costs. They don't just roll the closing cost in for you. Who else does this, even if you just refinanced last month, last year, two years ago? doesn't matter. They can handle it for you. Loan Pronto, that's who you need to call. 615-499-5780. LoanPronto.com is the website. Uh, Call them now. Start the process before the rates spike again. And you could even skip your next two house payments. How about that? 615-499-5780. Your current loan, your current mortgage rate starts with a three. Act now. 615-499-5780. LoanPronto.com. Dot com Equal housing lender, NMLS 1661781, subject to lender approval. Not all loans eligible for zero cost. Lately, we've been getting a lot of calls and questions about acoustic wave therapy for the treatment of erectile dysfunction.
Go to our guy, Alan Bell, sportsline.com. AB. Talk a little sports gambling here. AB, what's up? How are you, man? I'm great. Y'all doing all right? Doing well. So I, I saw uh, sportsline.com has your fantasy football draft Bible going. Correct. What can you and tell the people about out there that? Like, yeah, anybody out there like me who uh, definitely needs a hand. In terms of drafting, uh, yeah, it, it, it's really good. And really what it breaks down to you is this is, you know, when you get rounds like 6 through 11, you know, roughly around there, it could get a little hairy, right? So we, we kind of break down, no matter what service you use, ESPN, Yahoo, you name it, um, really just where to find your value because it's easy to make picks in the first and second round. It gets a little more difficult by that. How is your uh, Olympic betting going? Uh, it's going great. All right. I took France. Uh, you know, I faded the United States, which, which feels very unpatriotic. Exactly. You can't wow. bet against the country, can you? Well, let me say this. <laughs> I got bad news for you because, uh, team Iran tonight. So, uh, I don't know what to tell you here. Um, I think, I think the United States wins. Um, obviously Iran's the worst team in men's basketball at the Olympics, but if you give me 41 and a half points to play with, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to roll on that one. That's 41. what the number is? That's 41 crazy. Yeah. 41 and a half. And understand, look, when you're looking at a game, you know, in terms of the total, like these aren't NBA Finals games. We right. saw the Bucks, you know, 220, 222, somewhere around there. These are like 170. So if you're giving me 41 and a half points, yeah, I'm going to roll with that. Yeah, time is different. Rules are different. Everything. Yep. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah. I, Did you yep. ever know what the point spreads were when you were playing? No, I didn't. Like nobody walked smart up and said, hey, man, you're like, <laughs> smart smart you're like an eight-point dog to Florida. That no. might make me more pissed off. <laughs> no, no, no. Not that you're betting it. I'm right. just saying. No, I, no, I, I wish they – no, I never knew it. But when I was pro, somebody told me, I'll tell you the story next. I'll do this. <laughs> yeah, I, do, I do crazy. feel like those sports betting nowadays is so there's much no bigger because it's yeah. – right, yeah, there's you, no I mean, way yeah, to not know. It's, it's not frowned upon yeah. like it used to be, yeah. right? We had to pick up the paper. Yeah. Paper. Yeah, we, we don't have to meet, like, behind Kroger and exchange $20. <laughs> right. You know what I mean, to place the bat, like, yeah. Yeah, I'm with it. exactly. Hey, um, go ahead, Slate. Hey, B, looking at football, man, what's some of the most bet on teams right now when it comes to the Super Bowl? Yeah, game? so if you take the, 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 the five most popular teams that are bet at bet MGM to win the Super Bowl, uh, you've got the Buccaneers, you've got the Chiefs, you've got the Broncos, which a lot of people thought Aaron Rodgers was going to go there. Sorry, you might have lost your money on that one. Oh. You've got the Bills at number four, and you've got your hometown Tennessee Titans at number five. So, a lot of people throwing money on the Titans this year. Why right. do you That's think that is? Julio Jones effect. <laughs> yeah, we were talking about that yesterday. There's a Julio Jones effect. There's probably a fade the Colts effect too, right? Yeah, there is. There is. Uh, you know, also – there's, I'll say this. It goes to show how popular sports betting is in the state of Tennessee as well, okay. because Tennesseans are certainly floating a, a, a big part of that number, yeah. but it's a national number too. So it goes to show that, yeah, the Titans, once that Julio Jones trade went down, they started getting a lot of national attention. And I know that, you know, the Titans being a team, you know, the, it, it's kind of the, the – the said thing around here that, you know, that they don't get a lot of national attention, and that's true. But betters, yeah, they notice immediately. Uh, sticking with football, but in college football, obviously, uh, it happened fast, at least for, you know, random fan hearing the news, the Oklahoma-Texas to the SEC. What's the over-under on when they will actually play as a member of the Southeastern Conference, because, of yeah. course, it's 2024, 2025 that their TV deals expire, but that, there's no way it takes that long, right? No. no. <laughs> Could anybody imagine, like, breaking up with someone and living together with them for four more years? Like, there's no way. Four years, <laughs> not one season, like yeah. four. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, right? Uh, yeah, I I'll say this, you know, uh, Don, you're absolutely correct in terms of, you know, 2025 being the legal date that's put, you know, on these contracts, et cetera. Yeah, the, the actual date is July 1st, 2022. There's almost no chance that Texas and Oklahoma aren't in the SEC next year. And that is insane to say, by the way. Like, it's just so weird to say that. But, yeah, uh, the that's going to happen, and it's going to happen about as fast as all of this did in the last week. 
I'm all in on it, and part of that is yeah. because, like, doing what we do, you cheer for the you cheer for the story, right? Like, that is a massive college football story, one of the biggest in, in I mean, ever. Honestly. Huge, huge. Oh. And, you know, my favorite part, my favorite, not to cut you off, Brent, but like, no, my good. favorite part is this, is, you know, we all look at football for this, and rightfully so. But, you know, whether they do the divisions or they do the pods or whatever, like, there are so many other sports like that this is going to affect Rick Barnes is now playing against Texas mm-hmm. in the mm-hmm. SEC, right? They get some of, you know, Kentucky basketball. Also, if they do the pod thing, somehow you're going to end up with like Vanderbilt, Mississippi State, Texas, and Ole Miss in a pod somehow. And that's just going to be a nightmare to get out of. Like, I can't wait for this, man. It's going to be awesome in all sports. Alan Bell with us from sportsline.com at Alan Bell 247. All right, Aaron Rodgers reported last night at midnight. I think the plane landed around midnight. Everybody was tracking it and all these things. Um, how much does he change, like, these futures numbers with the Packers? Yeah, so the uh, the Vikings, um, you know, were the favorite to win the NFC North there for a while because sportsbooks were hedging their bets. Uh, once the Aaron Rodgers news was announced yesterday, it took 12 seconds for the Packers to become – the favorites again to easily win the NFC North. Uh, they jumped up to around, I think, like sixth or seventh, depending on your book, to uh, to win the Super Bowl. So, yeah, apparently Aaron Rodgers has a big, big momentum favorite. And I will say this. We were on uh, 3HL, I think it was two weeks ago, and we were talking about NFL Week 1. And we mentioned that you might want to take the Green Bay Packers plus three Week 1 against the Saints. That line is now about even. So, yeah, if you got it at plus three, good luck. If you didn't, that's tough. The Hall of Fame game is nine days away. I don't know if people understand yes. that. We have a football game next Thursday uh, mm-hmm. in the NFL. Steelers-Cowboys. you have any info on that one? I do. So, uh, the Steelers are one-point favorite. Uh, the total is about 34, so they don't expect a lot of scoring in that one. The <laughs> biggest part – that I think we all want to, you know, to kind of know and take in. With that being next Thursday, that means that this is the last week where we will not have football on television until mid-February. Oh. Oh. We've made it. We have made it, everybody. Man. Rejoice. We have made it. I know preseason football is language. the greatest, but it's better than nothing. I love it, A.B. All right, at Alabel 24-7, Sportsline.com. Thank you, buddy. I hey, appreciate y'all. Thanks so much. I mean, next Thursday. Oh, and I know crazy. it's preseason football. Yeah, I don't no, care. It's, it's football at this point right now, though. It's football. Over under 34. That's hilarious. <laughs> Not hilarious. a whole lot of points expected in that one. That's awesome. Oh, that's crazy. Not until the mm. – So, so – It's time to crank up. When I was a kid – like, people in my generation understand this. When I was a kid, every weekend you would have the Steelers on one channel and the Cowboys on the other. And so, a lot of us in my generation were either Steelers mm-hmm. or Cowboys fans. Mm-hmm. And I, I liked the Cowboys back then. Um, still do. Bless your heart. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm not, like, dying with every move they make and that kind of thing. But when you're a kid, you kind of romanticize things. But anyway, when I the Cowboys and the Steelers yeah. played, Everything. loved it. Absolutely loved it. Yeah. So, I love Irvin. those I two. was a Michael Irvin fan. Yeah, I love those two uh, uniforms on the field at the same time. That's next Thursday. All right, 5 o'clock hour coming up. Stay tuned. This is where the Titans play. Oh 104.5 The Zone.
Echo Park. You don't want to pay more when you don't have to. At Echo Park Nashville, they echo that. Their vehicles are always the lowest price, up to $3,000 less than their competition. Find your next vehicle today at echopark.com. Echo Park Automotive. Lower prices, higher quality, better experience. Dealing with a new crash now north of town, the right shoulder's blocked at I-65 northbound right before you get to Vietnam Veterans Boulevard. And also, we still have a serious crash at Hops and Pike heading northbound right at Mount Juliet Road. I'm Josh Schwabel Clay with traffic on your home for Titans football. 104.5 The Zone. From the WinBet studio, win with WinBet. WGFX Gallatin, Nashville. Get the very latest out of Titans training camp here on your home for Titans football. Trending now at 104.5 The Zone. Good afternoon, I am Joe Hunk, and Mike Vrabel met with the media to kick off training day uh, or training camp for the Tennessee Titans. Here's what he had to say about last year's defense that everybody is talking about. You know, when you go back and you watch, there's a lot of great snaps. There's a lot of great defense, but we have to be better. We have to be better on third down. We have to go and, and force the quarterback and make him be uncomfortable. And we have to cover guys at the sticks and, and all those things that we teach. Um, because again, that's where the problems occurred. I don't think that it was like just miserable. You know, there's a lot of good snaps in there. And then unfortunately, when you, when you play bad third down defense, you're just giving them more opportunities. And, you know, we know with more opportunities comes more production. So, you know, that's something that we, we hit hard in the off season. You know, we were teaching it and practicing it. So hopefully that, that will start to show up and then we'll be, you know, we'll be obviously practicing it out here. We'll have more for you tomorrow as training camp gets underway actually on the field. Now, will the Braves be buyers or sellers on Friday? Nobody knows. But they do play tonight against the New York Mets, and they did split the doubleheader yesterday, so they are still two games below 500 and still five games back from the Mets. Enjoy. For all your foundation repair and waterproofing needs, visit USSTN.com. Breaking news at once on your home for the Titans. The balls and that final hour of 3HL. This is 104.5 The Zone. The 3HL with Brent Doherty. We appreciate you. If you're watching on Zone TV, we appreciate that too. Twitter Live, Facebook Live, YouTube, and Twitch. Twitch, please. There she is, Don Davenport in the purple tank top with her hair in a bun, fully makeup out. Brought all the sass. A little she sassy was, today, a little sassy. She was running hot in more ways than one coming in here. <laughs> Fired up about drive throughs not going quick enough. Hey, listen, by the way, if you're in the restaurant industry and you are choosing to work right now, thank you. Yeah. Yes. You're beyond appreciated. So appreciative. You're so appreciated. So appreciated. Thanks, Tupac. Ah, look at that. See. Let's stop the show right now. Yeah, I mean the fire. I mean, it's lit. I mean, it is lit. I mean, boy. Dear we, mama. Hey, they just hey. don't make rap like they used to. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> All the mumble rap guys are going to come at you now. <laughs> the new generation. Dude, Tupac was a poet. Oh, didn't he know oh. it? Oh, yes. See what I did right now? Poetic justice. There he is. He's Ron Slay. I'm in the building. I'm in the building. I'm in the building. Hey, I'm in the building. I'm in the building. You I'm get tired building. of you. I'm in the building. <laughs> I'm in the building. I'm in I got the Kush building. Lash. Kush Lash. Kush Lash. McGuire. Uh, there he is, Ron Slay, in red today. Mm-hmm. Is that signifying, like, stop? <laughs> um, I'm just channeling my inner Firebird, Pearl Cone Firebird. Oh. oh That's what I'm go. doing. Okay. Yep. You haven't mentioned Pearl Cone in a while. Yeah, we just on the, um, hey, I, t- I don't know if I'm supposed to mention that. <laughs> you go again. Do I need, I got, I got like 15 more seconds. Do I need to hit the button? No, no. you're good. Okay. No, it's cool. All no, right, he didn't go anywhere. No, I ain't, yeah, I, yeah, but I was just about to say. I love, part of what I love, <laughs> there are so many things about you that I love. I just saw him, like, in the doorway, and I go, why do I always laugh when I look at you? <laughs> and uh, I love when you start a story, and then you put the brakes on in your head, and then you stop, and you're like, no, nope, not going to do it. <laughs> you know what the funny thing about it, what I was going to say is, what I was going to say it's already out there on social media, so I, I it's like I could say it, but I thought it was outlawed. 
What's outlawed? Let's just move along. <laughs> but it's on social media, so I can say it. Oh, if it's on social media, yeah. Okay, so yeah, so I got hyped up, and I did what well, maybe where the red and black was. Pro Cone was practicing, and they were practicing in the gym. And they were doing the Oklahoma drill. Oh. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's frowned upon nowadays. Yeah. But boy, who would brought but back that's on old media. school? Mm-hmm. If it's on social media, then everybody sees it. Yeah, boy, I'm hey, sure. Boy. It'll, I'm sure it'll ain't be a national like story in about. <laughs> An hour or so. Hey, we broke Sankey. <laughs> we broke that story. Now he's I mean, calling in yeah, next. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, dude, hey, man, that that right there, that's how you know it's football season. Mm-hmm. I get you. I get you. Oh, I'm going to have to ride by there. I'm going to have to ride by there and go on? check out a practice. Yep, I got to because ain't nothing like two people head up and that whistle blow and you hear that crack and neither one of them give. <laughs> and they talking about don't get hype in the media press box. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're Oklahoma drill up there. <laughs> and I wasn't a fan of it. That ran me away. The Oklahoma drill? Yeah. Yeah. So a- seeing a fastball Bump. ran you away from baseball. <laughs> yeah. And the Oklahoma drill ran you away from football. But I didn't get to run away because Fitzgerald made me get in there. It's good for you. That, good that's for you. Yeah, it <laughs> builds character. You it did. It did yeah. build character. I broke my boys and Coach Pump's back. Okay. I see why you don't like it. <laughs> I went too low. Maybe that's why. <laughs> How did I not know this story? Yeah. I didn't know this story yeah. either. Michael Maybe Clay that's why up. they don't do it. And they still do it at Pearl Cone. <laughs> <laughs> no, but everybody else know how to hit. And <laughs> you guys have been friends forever. That's my guy. He was out so of So he was still friends with you after you broke his back. We slept in the same room. <laughs> Shared a room. <laughs> it's like me and you and Hoover. Yeah, just like us. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the pillow like, wall. Yeah, on the bed. <laughs> yeah. So he was on the bed. I was on the couch bed. Pull out couch bed. Why? Because he had been there longer. Yep. Is that the reason? That's the reason why. Yep. Coach Pump. All right. Uh, Mike Brabel <laughs> met with the media today. I, I keep saying this, but if you're just tuning in, first live press conference at St. Thomas Sports Park since the week leading up to the AFC Championship game following that's the 2019 a, a season. Time. Media members there, cameras Back there. At it. Long time. Fans they, not there. They had their conditioning test today. They'll have a team meeting tonight, and then they will hit the field tomorrow. So the conditioning test, again, 40-yard run, 50-yard run, 60-yard run, depending on what position. Skill guys go longer. Skill guys go 60 yards. Big guys go 40. And then, you know, the in-between guys go 50. You got to do it in eight seconds. Mm. You got to do it 20 times. By the way, it's 100 degrees out. You had 30 seconds in between each run. Yeah, and Vrabel said they uh, they did well. That is that is so encouraging. Like I understand, like Bab said, they're professional athletes, and you're supposed to come in ready. But man, just to actually come in ready and you don't got no setbacks, that's that's what's up. Yeah, I know. I'm always worried about that soft tissue mm-hmm. injury. Mm-hmm. Like, who's going to be the hammy guy? There's always a hammy guy in training camp. Train yeah, got to be. Yeah. It's, it's, well, I hope it's not with us. But always. It is. Corey David. I mean. Y- all the time. Sean Evans. Teresa Walker, yes, he did. Teresa Walker asked the first question from Tokyo while covering the Olympics. She always does. Uh, she asked about the team's vaccination status. He did not offer, he being Mike Vrabel, did not offer a percentage of players vaccinated, but said he was happy with the progress. Yeah, way to go. We talked about this. Like, the hard line the NFL took. Yeah. You knew a lot you didn't of players. Have a choice. You honestly, you that didn't even want to do it would do it because you feel like you have to. Mm-hmm. True. That, that's and that's not that's honestly that's not just the NFL. You're seeing that across companies, and, uh, yeah. all companies, corporations. Like, okay, yeah, you don't have to get the vaccine, but if you don't, we're gonna make it really tough on you. Yeah. To come to work and be in person, and all of that. So. It's not just the NFL, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, and and some like companies aren't going to pay to test you every day, right. you know. And we asked Jim why it kind of the difference is when. By the way, there's a lot of talk of because Mike Vrabel was asked. You know what? Can we play Mike Vrabel's vaccine talk and then hit that because I think he addresses it during his his soundbite. So here's Mike Vrabel when he was asked about vaccines. There with the vaccine, I get that. I recognize that. Um, hopefully we can get a lot of that covered here uh, today uh, so that moving forward we can talk about football, we can talk about our team, and we can talk about our players. 
Um, is that obviously to everybody, it's also very important to everybody in the league. It's important to the fans, the players, the NFL, the NFL Players Association. Um, it's important for all of us uh, to make sure that we're well aware of what the protocols are for vaccinated and unvaccinated players and that we, we follow those. Um, that whatever that may be, the mask wearing, we're all wearing the tracing devices, the social distancing. Each and every one of us has uh, to, to this game, to this league, and, and most importantly, to the team. Um, I, I'm comfortable with where we're at. We continue to add recently as yesterday uh, to, the, to the vaccination list. Um, and, and guys are continuing to do uh, research, uh, to educate themselves, to make a personal decision that we've said it was all along, and, and hopefully one that they can come to um, that will, will help them. And percentages, I'm very comfortable with where they are, um, and, and I think they've, they've continued to go up, and I would expect them to go up. As far as identifying those players that, that haven't been vaccinated, um, that will be done um, you know, within our building so that we can continue to remind them of the protocols that they have to do and make sure that they are following those protocols, um, you know, practice field. Uh, so I wouldn't see any reason uh, to try to differentiate those players on the field. It, it's being done so that inside the building, um, you know, we can remind those players that aren't of, hey, you know, what you have to do. And so that's, that was the reason uh, for that differentiation. So uh, somebody had asked him about, you know, where are you percentage-wise at the number, you know, 80. Are you at the 80, 85% mark? And he's like, I don't even know what, where did that number come from? I think it's because of college, because the SEC um, and, and the advisory committee on COVID for college athletics is saying if your team is vaccinated at the 85% mark, then you don't have to be tested and, and you're free of the COVID protocols. That's not the case in the NFL um, completely. If you are vaccinated, you only have to get tested every 14 days. If you're not vaccinated, that's an everyday process. Pac-12 commissioner uh, today talking about talking about that. And I think he said they had eight teams that were um, at, above that 80% threshold. He also said this. This is so weird. We believe the move by Texas and Oklahoma to the SEC strengthens our position as the only conference with teams in the Pacific and Mountain time zones. <laughs> I retweeted and wrote that. Congratulations. <laughs> like, good job. Wait, that's your, that's your go-to? That's what you figured out? That's what you're running with? <laughs> I was going to say, we're the only team to rarely ever make the college football playoff. Yay, our conference is great. That's, that's like, man. They ought to try to get all the teams you, on. You just what need kind of to say nothing. Yeah, that, 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 I don't know. Nothing. Like, it's just say nothing. Yeah. It's the Pac-12. Oh, my gosh. We're going to have to break on that. Just say nothing. <laughs> don't get no silly. Don't that. say anything. <laughs> break on this, fool. We'll be right back. <laughs> Jay Martin Ramon getting ready to eat some Titans credit pie. How do you think the credit pie goes over the last two years for the Tennessee Titans? How does the pie get divvied up? Jay Martin, Ramon, Jason Martin, and Ramon Foster. Tomorrow morning, starting at 6 on 104.5 The Zone. Personally, I don't know what Jay Martin was talking about there. I only heard him talking about pie. I can't stand pie, for the record. I know. Come at me, at Brent Doherty. Uh, I want to talk with you in the meantime about a new mobile brake repair service that I'm really excited about called New Brakes New Breaks Mobile Brake Repair. New Breaks. NUBrakes.com is the website. Check them out. They'll send a full-time certified brake tech to your home, office, or wherever you are to fix your brakes on the spot. If you've got summer road trip plans, maybe your brakes are old, worn down, maybe they're squeaking, have new brakes. Come check them out before you leave. NUbrakes.com is the website. The best part is they only work on brakes, so you're never going to get upsold on auto repairs that you don't need. New brakes only uses premium brake parts, warranties all of their work, and provides an unmatched level of customer service. It's convenient, affordable. They're backed by thousands of five-star reviews. Simply head to newbrakes.com. That's nubrakes.com to request a quote. Choose your repair date. Then they come to you to fix your brakes. Make sure you tell them you're a zone listener and you'll get a 10% discount. It's newbrakes.com. That's nubrakes.com. 
What's up, people? Whether you need to upsize, downsize, or just want to take advantage of this red-hot market, Mark Spain Real Estate is the most trusted real estate team.
Perfect ending. <laughs> and the person I played it for? Not even here. Yeah. Coach Mack. Just, that's who you see in the video. <laughs> he played it for Coach Mack. Coach Mack. By the way, Break somebody the hit Blaine. What, what was going on there? That Blaine back at hat, man. I moved Coach Mack, and then I found Blaine. Like, he was just hey. chilling behind Coach Mack, hiding. He's playing hiding oh, I see him. I see him right down the corner right now. Blaine's in the corner of Coach Mack. By the way, it's 90. Well, I let Blaine out. <laughs> I out. found you, Blaine. Hey, welcome. Welcome to the party, Blaine. Hit man. He just had a birthday. Hitman. He so did. Yep. Happy birthday, Hitman. Mm-hmm. I saw the picture of him going after Mark Brunel on, online the other day. I showed my wife. I was like, look at Blaine up here. How t- high was he in that picture? Oh, my gosh. Mm-hmm. I was like, hey, man, were you worried about coming down? <laughs> he was like, I wasn't really thinking about it. But <laughs> I'm just trying to get him. You know, Brunel, we talked to Brunel about that. And uh, he, because, I mean, he's seen that picture a million times, too. I can't remember what happened in that play. I don't know if Brunel just pump faked him or or Blaine just, like, basically just covered him like a blanket. I don't know. <laughs> I don't remember. A lot didn't happen on the field. By the way, it's 92 degrees in Nashville still. Feels like 101. It's almost 6 o'clock, man. Sheesh. 522 to be exact. 23. Um, Cuzzo Mike. On YouTube, people, Mayor, Babs, Coach Slay, great show. Coach Slay, great show. Thanks for letting me crash it, LOL. I'm starting to think Cuzzo Mike might like us more than he likes J. Martin Ramon. Probably does, man. You think that's true? Yep, trying to venture on over. Come on, man, we got room over here on the bus. Come on in the boom, boom room. We got plenty of room. Boom, boom, boom is brought to you by Low T Center. (laughs) What if I just every time I said something, see? You like that one, huh? Good job. Yeah, you're welcome. You're like a NASCAR driver over there. <laughs> yeah, I'm just walking around with indoors. What's sitting in front of you? I, um, this right here is Kentucky bourbon whiskey. <laughs> this is brought to you by Red Dog Wine and Spirits. <laughs> Go in there and say, I'm in the building. <laughs> Red Dog got you. They always give the sample stuff in like this medicine bottle. <laughs> this thing. is like, like, yeah. Like, you a know, Dr. Bottle. Quinn, medicine woman, would have it in her office. <laughs> here, take one of these and call me in the morning. Yeah. Take one of these, you go lay down on that couch. <laughs> so we'll, what happened to Ramon? And, oh, you said, there he is. I see his head. He's over, He's there over here. Time. Yep. See, Ramon. Everybody's and, guarding Babs. Ramon and Blaine are protecting Babs, and there so is. is Coach Mack. Mm-hmm. I like Babs. it. I need some protection. At least you got Babs and Coach Mack and you. I got me over my <laughs> yeah. left shoulder. I ain't got nobody. It's just me and DraftKings. <laughs> <laughs> it's just me and them. Yep. <laughs> I swear, man. We're going to have you in a NASCAR in a second. You'll be running around the track. Mm-hmm. You did that in Vegas. And that was fun. Ooh, it's, man, this is no, you know what? What? I wonder how tired those drivers are, man, because, dude, oh, that is an you. adrenaline rush. Zapped. Like, you got to be exhausted getting out of those miles? cars. Yeah, oh. that's, that's and tough. And it's 120 something degrees inside that Ooh. car with the heat suit on. You know what yeah, I want to see him do one day? I want to see him, like, one weekend just shut down I-40 and go from one side of the country to the other. Me? Like the Cannonball Run. No, like these NASCAR oh, okay. guys. I thought you wanted to shut it down for me to go that way. Somebody no, I want him to race down I-40, like the Cannonball Run. Remember that movie back in the day? No. Oh, man, I finally found something. I, saw, I found Wildcats last night. Did you watch it? I didn't get to watch it, though. <laughs> I found it, though. I've been telling you to watch that forever. Yeah, so Leslie Snipes. Goldie Hawn's in it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just watch out for the bathtub scene when Lil Ron walking around. Okay. All right. Um, <laughs> what else we got? People were tracking Aaron Rodgers' plane last night from California to Green Bay. He arrived in Cheesetown around midnight. He wants him to trade for Randall Cobb, who's from Knoxville, but played at Kentucky. That's random. Mm-hmm. He loved Randall Cobb, man. Yeah. In the slot. Yep. Lay it off. Oh, he made, a, he made a demand for him? Mm-hmm. So they're trying to work it out. No, wait a minute. So uh, one of his conditions to come back is you got to have Randall Cobb. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Which basketball player did you play with at Tennessee? Like, if you went back to Tennessee, you would have to have this guy. Out of all your guys. That's a lot. See? You can't do it. Yeah, I can't. There ain't no way. <laughs> ain't no way I could do that. Slip? I definitely got to have Slip. Yarbrough? Got to have Nasty. John Higgins? <laughs> okay. gotta, I got to have Higgs. <laughs> Took too long to answer. Yeah, I know. Um, I, I saw Brandon Wooden in for here. Trey Wingo said that, that, that A-Rod wanted Randall Cobb back. It looks like they're going to get it done, so we'll see. Uh, Devontae uh, wants a new Adams. contract now. Yeah, he's wow. he's up at the end of this season. 
So, uh, okay, so. He wasn't going to talk to him. Now he's willing to talk to him. But, I mean, A-Rod's only there for one year. Right. And you put out, as far as the bets, um, they moved to over or under on 10 wins. 10 wins. At yep. this point, with all this stuff going on, I think I may take the under. Really? See, that's, that's Devontae, like a, we don't even know if Devontae, is he going to sit out? That's like a trap bet to me because I, I thought 10 and 7, they're going to be better than that. What if no nobody play? So I think it's a trap bet. Reverse line theory. There you go. Okay. So you go under, like you said. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, man. So the under is 9 and 8. Can you imagine? Yeah. Can you imagine the drama coming out of Green Bay if they're 9 and 8? Every bit of it. I would love it because I want the Rams to win the NFC anyway. Yeah, why are you in on the Rams? Because I bet on them. Why else? <laughs> I mean. <laughs> Here are, uh, this is according to. <laughs> I've invested sports in. Sportsbetting.ag. Okay. Packers odds went from, to win the Super Bowl, went from 25 to 1 to 14 to 1. MVP, Rodgers odds went from 20 to 1 to 14 to 1. NFC, winning the NFC, Packers odds went from 12 to 1 to 8 to 1. AFC North Packers odds went from minus 115 to minus 130. And the victory total Packers went from off the board to over under of 10 wins. Mm. Again, the 10 wins doesn't match up with the rest of that stuff. No. That's what's weird about that. Or don't. Maybe they know something's going to happen. That's what I'm telling you. Yep. <laughs> They're drawing you in there, Slay. They're trying to pull me. I ain't going, though. Babs won't let me go anyway. She, she, she already mm. said I made enough. You haven't been in yellow light in a while. I don't know what's going on. Over yeah, because there. there's nothing going on. I'm not betting on the Olympics. No, but ba- Babs has been more like green and red lately. Yeah, yeah that's true. There's no in between. Yeah. There's no like, sl- hey, slow it down, boys. Yeah. yeah. She's either like stop or keep going. So maybe we got her in the hot air balloon of reality <laughs> that we was trying to get her in during the hockey game. <laughs> I would never get in one of those things. A hot of air reality? balloon? <laughs> a hot, a hot yeah, air balloon one. of reality. <laughs> Passing yardage over <laughs> under 4,300.5. That's a lot. Touchdown passes. Somebody got a message. Over under 36.5. <laughs> and interceptions over under 6.5. Over. I'm going over. Wait, is that, is that 4,300? Don't let me go back. Was that 4,300 for Aaron Rodgers? Yeah. You know, like, through 17 games, that's only 250 yards passing a game. Yeah, but he's old. He's Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> Plus, you know he's going to want to just yeah, he gonna floor to them out the door on this last season. That's why he won't Randall Cobb. He want to get someone going across the middle. And, but I'm going uh, – he's going to gunsling. He took care of the ball last year. He's going to throw that thing away this year. I it's, think he's going to take care of himself this year. There's going to be drama. There's no doubt. Speaking of drama, man, I was uh, – I woke up like 5.30 this morning – start working and all the olympic stuff was going on and so uh, so all this simone biles stuff started happening Mm -hmm. and the first thing was simone biles spoke with a member of the medical staff before walking out of the arena she pulled out of the team final and then they said she came back out there to encourage her teammates nbc then reported that it was not a physical issue it was mental U.S. Gymnastics said it was a physical issue. Her coach said it was a mental issue. All this was going back and forth in like 20 minutes. So then she said it was more of a mental thing. And so, you know, I, it's an interesting story in that um, it shines a light on mental health, which I think is very, very important. Mm-hmm. But the question is, would we look at this situation differently if we were talking about a male athlete totally because growing up in the in the male world in sports if you're not out there giving everything you got no matter what's going on you're weak totally so that's what i started thinking like if this was lebron james in the nba finals and he just pulled out a game four (laughs) because he wasn't mentally right would we be treating this story the same way and my my guess is no. I would, Honest guess is no. I wouldn't think we would in the last year or two, for sure. But have we dealt with any of this in football? Any situation like this? I know we've done it Not in that basketball. that we know of. K 
Kevin Love, remember Kevin Love in basketball Maybe. walked off the court. DeMar DeRozan said he suffered some mental health issues during the season. Then we saw Paul George, him come out during the playoffs in the bubble and talk about his mental state. Yeah. Um, I like what Blaine, Blaine said today, mental burnout. I like that phrase of what, I mean, we really don't know what's going on. Without question. But Look I did at, like that phrase. I, I, I mean, there's so much more to it, though, in the Simone Biles um, situation as well. Um, I mean, obviously, with with the the trainer and everything that she went through with that, and all the gymnasts went through with that. There's that. There's the, just the weight of, I, honestly, the weight of the sport on her shoulders mm-hmm. is what she's feeling. Like at some point, you can't handle it all. Mm-hmm. You just can't. You crack. And yep. and. I mean, I think it's it's impressive that she was back out cheering for her teammates and, yeah. and all of that, and and they were able to to pull together and grab oh. silver. But um, but I feel like there there's more to her story than maybe just a, a random male figure. But it's a it's a great point that you bring up, Brent, because I you're I think you're a hundred percent right. It's a different conversation if it's a male athlete. Without question. And I think it's getting better in our society that we're talking more about mental, you know, um, strength and issues mm-hmm. and, and all of that. It's getting better, but it's still, there's still a stigma well, to and, it. I mean, she is the most famous athlete at these Olympic Games, and it's not close. Yep. 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 Not even close. And yep. so, you know, it's easy for people to, you know, throw shots at her or whatever, but. You know, may, maybe her being a female going through this maybe allows us to take a different look at what, what you know, is important from a mental health standpoint. Because you're right, she's had the, the weight of the the weight of that sport on her back for a long time. Yeah. And uh, somebody, point, maybe it was Darren Ravel, somebody pointed out a, an article that she did recently where she was asked, where do you feel most comfortable? Because a lot of athletes would say on the beam or, you know what I mean, like, doing what they mm-hmm. they have always done and love to do and she yeah. said when i have time off yeah and so now looking back at that answer sad right yeah. they, they practice like seven days a week oh gymnastics such a different it's, i mean that's a totally a different, different breed world. i mean kids that'll never experience anything close to that do that like practice yeah. all the time and are all in all the time it's a fine line with kids, man, because you don't want to uh, get them to the point where you break them and they and they hate it, you know. But you also want to push them to be the best that they can be and to develop. I think in anything learn all competitive, those. yeah, anything competitive, I, I think you got to deal with that part. Yeah, I mean that that mental part is, and I, I think it's like Bab said, the uh, the more and more we progress in science and studying of the body, the mind, everything in sports, like you start to figure out. It's more to it than, hey, man, run these sprints. Hey, man, go a little harder. Hey, do one more. You know, so, the, like, I, I like what you said, like what Blaine, what Blaine said. Like, the burnout, man, the burnout is real. Like, I mean, who knows? Maybe that just hit her right there. Yeah. Like, I'm I'm done. Mm-hmm. I'm mm-hmm. giving everything I mm-hmm. can give. And and, and it, it does that. It does that. It's, especially, but... I think it was something chipping away at it too, and like Bab said, it just yeah, like it just all of a sudden, it could have been a rolled ankle. It was like you know what I, I'm I'm not I'm not doing this no more. Mm-hmm. I ain't fighting through this. Um, I need a break. Uh, Tomahawk Chop Twenty Two on Twitch. Uh, what she did would be equivalent of Tom Brady decided not to play in the morning of the Super Bowl. She shouldn't have made the trip and given someone else that wanted to be there that spot on that team. She didn't know though. Yeah, that that, that and well, that's the thing. I think she thing. had I mean, a breakdown literally. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and and I totally get what he's saying, but this is the other thing too. She knew in that moment that she was going to cost her team mm-hmm. a medal mm-hmm. because she couldn't do the it. Gold medal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Well, on it if she would but I mean if she didn't walk away, maybe more. Yeah. You know, like she knew that she just wasn't there. Yeah. So you can almost look at it on the other side that, okay, she knew that she was going to cost them 
a medal, so she removed herself. So the, the way I read that, because I wasn't watching, uh, the, way I, the way I read it, they were down by 2.5 points to Russia when she did that, mm-hmm. and that's a lot, apparently. A lot. Like she, they weren't going to beat them anyway. Uh, and then they did win the silver medal. So now the question is, does she go back out there for individual stuff, and then that will raise even more questions. But you know what? It's comments like that, though. That we all that like goes back to what we were talking about yesterday. Like, why can't we get the top athlete to play in this game and do it for everything? Now you talk about the practice, and then you look at basketball. Use them for example. You look at all the practice. <laughs> you gonna get it? And you look at all the practice and things that they go to the strenuous season and everything. And then you go into the summer, and this is supposed to be your break before you go back into your routine that you really get paid for. So, like, one of the dudes on the, in the NBA world that had been playing for so long, you, you could see that happen. Yeah, like, uh, like I, mean, I, I don't want to go. Out. Yeah, I need a break, man. I need a break. I need, for a month and a half, I need to be around family and on a break. And it's and it's hard because you know you're going to face ridicule. Yeah. Especially but then, when you're talking about But the then Olympics. you have somebody saying that they should have gave that spot up for somebody else. Right. Okay, well, well I won't go then. This is Dan, Dan Wetzel wrote, a piece on a it. Brilliant, Dan Wetzel. Yes, wrote a piece on it and and tweeted just some thoughts on it. Now you you should go read his actual full piece, but you know along along the the answer to to mm-hmm. this conversation, he said on Simone quitting on her team, she actually saved it. Her vault scored a thirteen point seven six six, brutally low. Um, you know we all know that or whatever. U.S. can't win silver if she's scoring like that. Hmm. Biles, this is her quote. I was like, I'm not in the right headspace. I'm not going to lose a medal for this country and these girls because Hmm. they've worked too hard to have me go out there and lose a medal. Wetzel said she had no confidence that she would score well. I didn't want to go into any of the other events not believing in myself, so I thought it was better to take a step back and let these other girls do the job, and they did. So basically, Wetzel said, you know, the gold was obviously, that was gone after Simone's vault, but the U.S. wound up with silver. Nothing bad happened. She cost her teammates nothing. So you say that, man, and then you look at it like, and you have to take a step back and look at it and say, how unselfish was that? Right. So there's there's two ways to look at it. You can look at it that way and say that's unselfish because she knew. Now, other other people would be like, well, who's to say that she would score that low? You know. Yeah, you know yourself. You know, we all know yeah. that if you don't have the confidence to, especially in that sport and what she's mm-hmm. turning and doing mm-hmm. and, and what gymnasts are expected to mm-hmm. do in each event, if you don't have confidence that you're in a good place, you are going to fail. And it's even more so mental in the yes. space that they're in because there's no fans. Right. If and fans were there, that could put any sport without question. If you questions. walk out on the basketball court in your Tennessee uni, right. not thinking that you're the man, you're not going to be nope. the man. You're nope. not going to be the sleigh that we know. Nope. That's an interesting point because sometimes, you know, the, the fan energy can get you Pushes through. Pushes you through. Like, exactly. Yeah. Like, that. like people are banged up all the time and they're like, man, just let me make it to game day. Hmm. If I make it to game day, I can get that extra push as soon as I hear that roar of the crowd. There. See what I'm saying? Tennessee Gator Brett, uh, she said in an interview the other day that she worries more about getting injured now than she did when she was younger. Just saying the PGA's Matthew Wolf had similar issues this year. Um, so, uh, yeah, no, interesting You don't, you don't story. know what's going on, man. Nope. You don't know what's going on. That's, that's... There's, there's clearly a lot more to it yeah, than what without, we're seeing, what we're question. hearing, all of that. But I just – I do think that there's – there's more to the story. There's different sides. There's different ways to look at it. Mm-hmm. But to Brent's point, too, what would the conversation be like if it was a male that did this? Yep. And would I just think I, different? think I think a lot of people are still going to give her a hard time. Yeah, they are. Yeah. But oh, if, absolutely. You, yeah. uh, we're seeing it. We're seeing it in the comments. And we're, we're, I'm seeing it on my Twitter feed. She yeah. quit on her team. Yeah, that's, that's, I, I don't like that, especially if they don't show a past – with them quitting on their yeah, team. Yeah, there's, or there's something no like history that. of like, Simone yeah, exactly. Biles quitting like, on anybody. Come on. <laughs> if it's anybody that want to get out there and push, I yeah. mean, come on now. Yeah. 615 737 1045. Hit us on Twitter at 3HL 1045. A lot of comments rolling in uh, on Twitter and on Zone TV. Twitter, live, Facebook, live, YouTube, and Twitch. We'll be right back. 3HL 1045, the zone. 
Wall to wall Titans training camp coverage happens here. Bam! This is your exclusive home for Titans football. 1045.
Okay. Got to win by two. Rally scoring was not was not the case back no, in my day. That's how old I am. Because we didn't have rallies. Day, well, volleyball yeah. back in her day was very long. Yes. But then you have to serve to get the point? Yes, back in the day. Now it's rally, so yeah. you s- score on every possession so or every any, play. Whoever hits it into the net, the other team gets the point now. Mm-hmm. Spoiler alert, 25 all. Well, this was oh. – this was. This was earlier. Last night. Body blow. Too. Yeah, somebody somebody put on Twitch that it was live, and I was about to go, okay, guys, is this live or not? I don't I want to double check. I think I watched it last night. It's 7.48 in the a.m. over there. Did I watch it last night? They're getting ready to roll. Uh, in Team USA men's Ooh. basketball tonight at 11.40 p.m. Okay. It's, there it's, you go, Slay. Oh, they're going to smack them. Iran, they're 43-point favorites. That's a lot of points, man, in anything. It's not on television. Yeah, that's weak. What in the world? That's weak. No wonder their ratings suck. Yep. Ain't no fans. They don't even feel like, the, listen, man. I. What are we doing? It's not on television. No, it's on the Peacock app. <laughs> well, they're trying to push that app. Yeah, right. So. Yeah, I mean, it's the same as ESPN. ESPN up. Plus, is, yeah. it, they're, they're putting good events on on these apps to try and push people. It's my that app. They need to put it on television. <laughs> That app's good. I won't lie. I've got that app. That app is good. Oh, yeah. Which and line? you were supposed to watch The Godfather on it. Did you watch it? I do have The Godfather set. No, I, you have it. I have no, it. he I has not. Saved. That's a no. Not watched it. Thank no. It's a yes or no I'll question. be honest with you. I saved it, and then I went past it yesterday going, oh, yeah, I'm supposed to watch See, that. come on, huh? And then I just kept scrolling. I love that one of y'all is supposed to watch The Godfather, and one of y'all is supposed to watch Wildcats. <laughs> you just going to throw me out there. <laughs> Completely different movies. Instead, yeah, I chose to watch the new Space Jam movie. <laughs> Instead Again? of watching God, I'm glad you did say, though. Yeah, you already watched it once, huh? Don't yeah. watch it no more. No, it's, it was it's legit. I actually I like it. Let's see, oh, you ass up twenty seven, twenty six. I either watch Godfather or watch the Fear Street series that's on Netflix. I'm choosing Fear Street, so it's yeah, gonna take me a minute to get to Godfather. So about this Simone Biles thing, Evelyn chi- uh, chimes in on the Twitter feed. As a gymnast, you train and compete completely fearless, which is why they start so young. But once your mental gets off and the slightest hint of fear creeps in during a tumble, that could lead to a crucial injury. See? Yeah. yeah. Dude, if my mental ain't off, I ain't there, I'm not flying around and right. all that stuff. Right. Bad things can happen. Mm-hmm. Well, I still think this story's d- treated differently if it's a dude. Oh, if it's LeBron in Game Six oh, of the if NBA it's Finals, LeBron, definitely different. Well, and that's the, that's the equivalent for for this though. Like you're the biggest name in your sport. If it was LeBron in the NBA Finals Game Six, they would crucify LeBron. He he wouldn't make it out of the, out of the gym. Right Remember when he stood over in the corner? Yeah, people still talk about it's, that exactly. And that and was for like thirty seconds. Yeah, and it's something he's been doing. Rondo was up coaching. Nobody said anything about that. Yeah, it's, it's different for different different people. I was about to say something. Different strokes for different folks. That is. What were you going to say? I forgot. <laughs> I forgot. It was good, too. Boy, that was good. Hey, that was going to be one to end the show right there. Right there? Yeah, that was going to be the one. We would have ended early? Yeah, you would have had to because it was, it was that explosive. <laughs> then it just left me. Why is Ramon not bringing any more food? He just cut it off all the time. All of a sudden. I think. Um, Drinks, too. Yep. Ramon's like, hey, my rookie season's over. Yeah. It, is it that almost, where we it are? almost actually is. It's it? like fall. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Camp's about the camp yep. starting. He's oh, like, yeah. oh. Yep. Because yeah. he was saying Tennessee was going to be eight and four or whatever yep. he was saying. So it was. I yep. remember that. Ah. Uh, hmm. He got on to me last time I brought that up. Yeah. Stop bringing up old stuff. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, you do this long enough, you say a bunch of crazy stuff. People mm-hmm. throw it right back at you. Mm-hmm. That's how Freezing Cold Takes has a Twitter feed. <laughs> See? Freezing Cold Takes is a Twitter feed. a very active Twitter feed, too. Oh, wow. I never knew <laughs> that. Okay. They'll find tweets that you put out there like, Jacksonville is going to win the Super Bowl. Oh, and then they, they just o- silly. Owen whatever. Yeah, they just acting silly. See, we ain't on here that silly. <laughs> I was just using that as an example. Oh, okay. Nobody would say that. Oh, somebody might. Oh, somebody might. Yeah, exactly. That. By the way, Candace Story Lee over at Vandy- Vanderbilt at Vandy AD. What a great surprise to see Coach Johnson and his wife, Catherine. Bobby oh, Johnson. Bobby Johnson. He's the best. I love that dude so much. I bet when he was on the wall. He probably was. They had a picture of him on the wall. Yeah. They draw the coaches Good on dude. Him.
He went through a lot, too. Yeah. A couple of players passed away while he was there. I mean, coaches deal with a lot of stuff, man. A lot. He was a great dude. He got them into the bowl game for the first time since 1982 and all that. Appreciate hey, it. you can make the Coach. argument James Franklin won with his players now. Oh, here you go. <laughs> like it, uh, Vandy uh, hating, man. He also went back That's to back. Not Vandy Hayden. He went back to back nine win seasons. It's never been done in the history of that program. Has it been done again? No. Hey, will it ever be done again? Especially with what we got going on now. Are they leaving the SEC? No. No. Nah, then no. I'm just kidding. <laughs> go Vanderbilt. Get yours. Uh, back at it tomorrow. 3HL uh, after party is next. Um, have a great night. See ya. Stay Don't. cool. Buck dives deep into a system QB. All quarterbacks are system quarterbacks. This is one of the most ridiculous notions or labels. We have to assign labels to everything. System quarterback is a cliche, like game manager, or at least it's been turned into one. The Buck Rising Show, tomorrow morning, starting at 10 on 